93X half ass Morning Show. 93 on December 7th, 1941, Japan, like its infamous Axis partners, struck first and declared war afterwards. Today's a day of remembrance across the country. The bombing of Pearl Harbor. We have witnessed this morning the severe bombing of Pearl Harbor. A devastating surprise attack on U.S. military forces in Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Pray in silence and remember those of our comrades who have fallen. National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. I hear you, Covey. National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. That's an important special thing. I just started why it's, I know it's super old, came out in 2010, but the miniseries The Pacific oh, was on HBO. It was, it's so far great. I've only got through one episode. Mm-hmm. I believe there's 10, so I got yep. some work cut out for me. But so far, it's been great. Yeah, like the Band of Brothers. Say It's also yep. Steven Spielberg and uh, uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, that movie, I remember when it came out, a lot of veterans and stuff had to leave the movie theater because it hit too close to home. Oh, are, we, are we talking about two? I'm talking about the HBO miniseries. Yeah. Oh, that was in theaters? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. That'd be a long movie. It is yeah, a special they, they day. They broke it up in chunks. I'm going to break you into chunks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Half Fast Morning Show. Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. I got to know a few World War II veterans in my lifetime. Through my parents, of course. I wasn't some weird kid in the neighborhood who made a point to befriend men that were 60 years older than me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would have been strange. And they would have said, get off my front step. Who, who are you? Get out of here. Uh, through my folks, some of them were friends, some of them were family members. Uh, but the last World War II veteran that I've ever personally known passed uh, about a month and a half ago. My great uncle Francis, who was probably the best person that I've ever known in my life. My grandpa was a World War II vet, and um, he ac- actually, he's, his story's kind of humorous. I mean, if you could find some humor there, is that he trained for all these different things, and then they decided each time, you know, we don't need that anymore. You got to learn how to do this, and then he never did a thing. So I, don't, I guess I don't know if you can call him a vet, but he, he did, he had a couple deployments, um, but did, never really did anything, he said. By the time they got him warmed up to a certain gimmick, they switched him over to another. Yeah, so he knows how to, or he knew he's passed, but he knew how to do a lot of cool things. But, but by the time he was ready, yeah. she was all over. Is and so, you know, of like, course, we're interested in, in, you know, what he, when he served and kind of what he experienced. And he's like, well, it's not going to be as exciting as you think, <laughs> simply because I tried my best, but I trained in on something and they moved me to the next And thing. then the war ended. And then that was it for him. <laughs> That's yeah, still more of a contribution we that we've made. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, my great uncle Francis, I, I, I must have forgotten to mention a month and a half ago when he passed away. Um, truthfully, I was lucky to have known him, all of us, uh, from my family. I think you, if you ask any member of my family who knew my great uncle Francis, they'd say the same thing. We, he was just the best. He was the person that everyone should strive to be. He won medals for his conduct in battle in World War II. He went through absolute hell. And when he came out the service, he never asked for a damn thing. And he was just the nicest, kindest, most selfless, wonderful person that my family could ever claim. It, it, he really was just something to see. That's that generation, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's, how, that's how it was. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so whenever there's any kind of a World War II Remembrance Day or something, he's the first guy that comes to mind. Toys for Tatas tomorrow morning. 6 a.m., the doors open. And I wanted to make mention of another wonderful person in my life. Now, she's not a World War II veteran. As far as I know, the only battles she's had uh, were probably with her co-workers and some of her knucklehead friends. But 
Josh knows uh, my gal friend, Lene, every year she stops by my place and dumps off a pile of toys to be donated to Toys for Tatas. And then we bring them on over, don't we, Josh? She does. She It's always a huge allotment of uh, and a variety she thinks of everybody it takes a year of shoplifting to accrue all of these <laughs> gifts but it's such a sweet gesture uh, and she usually gets badass gifts it always too. is yeah, badass she does awesome yeah. stuff and i wanted to make mention of Lene also this morning and i wanted to throw i wanted to you know show you a couple of these these donations um because one has a, a kind of a funny story behind it well, first off, there's two big giant Target bags full over here. I wanted just to tell you about two, three, four of them that Lene has donated. And, of course, this is how you're going to you know, get in for free tomorrow uh, at Rick's Cabaret Gentlemen's Club downtown Minneapolis. When the doors open at 6, you bring in that new unwrapped toy and uh, put it in the bin. And you get in for free. You get the free food and then uh, the naked chicks and the beer drinking. But... Um, Probably have to dodge a money shot if I bring this first toy anywhere near Dana. It's a Mario Kart uh, matchbox car uh, set. Oh, cool. (laughs) That's awesome. It's a set of, I probably had a, I could have said that a little clearer, but these kinds of things are foreign to me. A Hot Wheels Mario Kart set of characters and vehicles. I still didn't do a very good job. Have they added that to the game? You got your shells, you've got your banana peels, you don't mess with people. Do mm-hmm. they have the money shot to shoot somebody <laughs> right off the course? It can, will that wipe you out of that, Rainbow Road? That That's on the upcoming Mario Kart after Dark Edition. <laughs> <laughs> he just what I stuck in place. <laughs> oh, oh, you, you oh. bastard. Oh. You guys are... You know how like the oil slick thing, whatever yeah. it is, just, just, you can't yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh! That's yes. exactly what I was picturing. Does that first? <laughs> You're sick, man. Thank You're you. sick. You're gross. Matchbox cars, Mario Kart type of a setup. You got your Diddy Kong. You got your light blue Yoshi, uh, Toad, and finally a character uh, named. Uh, Waluigi? Waluigi. 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 Dude, did you say light baby blue Yoshi? That's the best one. I'm glad to hear it. This next uh, donated item uh, from Lene, I thought, now this would be a great way uh, to send an older relative into cardiac arrest. It's a remote control snake. Oh, <laughs> fun. Oh, oh. That's really cool. I've never heard of this before. That would be oh. so sweet to play a prank on my sister. Oh, my gosh. Is she terrified of snakes? Yes. I, I almost died one time because of a snake prank. I had a rubber snake. I put it in her bed and then uh, waited until night. She pulled back the covers, screamed. I went in maybe about a minute after. I thought the coast was clear to grab my snake because I really wanted it. Uh oh. <laughs> she was behind the door and it was like uh, Barton Homer. She just all of a sudden popped out from behind the door, yeah, and then grabbed my neck. And I was like, Ugh! and I turned blue. <laughs> None of the other guys in her bedroom stepped in to help you out. No, oh. not at all. She choked you until you turned blue because you put a rubber snake in her bed? Yeah, we were like 10. It was just after I got my head slammed in the door. It makes it even more frightening. Well, she was trying to kill you, dude. <laughs> so how about that? A remote control snake. I've That's never fun. heard. I'd like to uh, try this out on uh, someone who's in good health. I just realized I should check on a buddy of mine. Same thing. <clears throat> he hooks us up big time. Derek. And... He usually shows up, you know, he said, hey, I, he, he's got to work, he can't make it, so he was going to drop off a bunch of stuff last night, and he never showed, and I just assumed maybe something came up and he'd, I'd see him today, but... It can happen. Maybe I should call his family and make sure he's all right. <laughs> every year. <laughs> it's, a, every, it's a tradition, yeah. every year he does it. Year after year, he hooks you up, and now you haven't heard from him? Oh, maybe... Maybe he's coming up with an excuse to finally be able to show. Oh, that'd be fun. Get out of work. Now, how about this? Also a donation from my friend Lene. An old school steel Tonka truck. Oh, it's oh. made of steel, not the plastic ones that they started yeah, doing for so, a while? They, those were so much better. Right, so, you know. Didn't know you could get those. This gives me high hopes that, uh, you know, uh, one of the kids, whatever kid lands this toy, can get the same thrill that uh, my brother and I had back in the 70s playing 
with the old school steel built Tonka trucks. Those Tonka trucks could get run over by an actual truck and be just fine. You would you'd be none the wiser. Mm, yeah, those were the best. Over. A buddy of mine across the alley, he had every toy. He always had. He had all the cool stuff, and mm. he had every Tonka truck you could get. It was awesome. And he had the perfect backyard for it, too. We dug a... You know, I'm just thinking, it's like, a lot of parents might not let you do this, but we dug the crap out of that backyard, the whole thing. <laughs> building, we built a little town back there. That's with those adorable. Tonka. That's cool. We had a sandbox when we were little, my brother and I, so that's where the... Tonka trucks would go, but because we were ungrateful little pricks, you should have seen the look on our folks' face. They, they got us these Tonka trucks, and sure, we pushed them around for maybe two, three days, you know, doing the whole make-believe thing as a kid, right? And then one day we got out a hammer and destroyed them, and that was the end of that. Oh, oh man. man. You know what I mean? We're just, we're just, I bet you regretted that quickly. Just barbaric. You know, idiotic. We, 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 we just decided how cool would it be if we beat them to death with this hammer. And our folks came out to the sandbox and said, what the hell's the matter with both of you? Gosh. That, 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 so it, boys. It's, it's, it's over? You just you beat them to death? <laughs> Finally, uh, this last uh, toy I wanted to make mention of, this one kind of cracked me up. Um, because when Lene pointed it out, she mentioned that. And it makes sense when she mentioned it. This is one of the games that we played as kids, Josh, that may have played a role in anxiety issues once those kids turned into adults, and that is the the game Perfection. Yup. Oh, Oh, I've never actually played Perfection. Okay. I hate that game. We played this as... I've heard of it. Okay, we played this as kids. We had that in my... um, I remember in my elementary school classroom, I remember that moment because that thing is so difficult. And so when she handed it to me yesterday, she's like, remember, you know, this is a game that kind of was the springboard for children later developing anxiety issues. And if you don't know the game perfection, there's like a, what what, what would I call this right here, Josh? Like a... Well, different shapes? Yeah, there's like a board. Yep. Um, and there's a clock, and you set the clock, I think, to 60 seconds, but I could be wrong. And you have that amount of time. You can set it to 10 seconds, 25, whatever you want, but I think the max is 60 seconds. And you have that amount of time to fit all of these pieces into their proper shape before the time is up and the board pops and explodes and it sends all the pieces all over your bedroom. Oh, I want to play it again just so I can prove that I can do it now. (laughs) So (laughs) when she mentioned the anxiety thing, I said, you know, I guess that makes sense because, you know, you... Well, you're you're you're, looking for perfection. Yeah, you're under the gun to perfect this game before (laughs) it explodes into a million pieces. Maybe, but also, maybe this was... The beginning stages of how people became uh, bomb diffusers and things like that, though. Maybe that's the liquor talking, but you know what I mean? Possible. With the clock running out and you're trying oh, to... Yeah. Right. Perfection is one of the games she donated. So we'll, we'll, we'll make a young kid uh, a, a future anxious adult. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of two people that have made me feel bad this morning. I, I my, my plan was today to go out, and maybe this is a lame gift. I thought it'd be great. Now I'm, now I'm questioning it because we mentioned before some of the older kids get left out. You know, it's just, when you're thinking toys, obviously you're thinking little kids, so it's natural. And that, that's why they like us to put that reminder out there. But I was going to get uh, some hats from different local teams, like winter caps, which I thought maybe an older kid would like. But now I'm wondering, maybe they won't think it's that cool when you got perfection and Tonka <laughs> trucks going to little kids. Maybe you're thinking, no, F that. I want a whatever is the hottest thing with a, sp- a fidget spinner. Oh, I, don't know. I think they, that's a cool gift. They, I think a lot of, lot like of teenagers a, are like uh, overly obsessed with sports and all that. I could see it, though, that the kid opens up his gift and then he, you know, he puts on his hat and then all of a sudden he looks around and all the other kids are playing with their toys. <laughs> yeah, somebody got him a walk. Uh, well, I almost said a Walkman. Uh, AirPods. <laughs> Dude, I think you're, no, don't, don't, don't. Uh, I, know, I thought that'd be pretty sweet, but maybe, maybe not now. You're, you're, uh, late. Linne has me thinking twice. You're overthinking it. I, if you go out and get like a Viking stocking cap and yeah, a pig cool. stock, that's cool stuff. When yeah. I was 12, 13, 14, 15, that was all I cared about in life. Well, I see you wearing one because you're in this picture I'm looking at because you're the second person that's made me feel bad this morning, Dana. And, mm-hmm. uh, well, I knew it was Christmas when we finally got 
our Mary Krampus card from local band Impaler. And they've been so good to us over the years. Oh, yeah. Every year they send us an awesome card. This one doesn't disappoint. <laughs> uh, these guys are so great. Turf Club, December 15th, they got a show. You should see them live. They're oh. a lot of fun. Uh, but Dana also sent in a Christmas card, or he sent me a Christmas card here. Dana, the guy sitting over to my right there, yeah. you, you created <laughs> is, a Christmas card? And this is why I feel bad. You've got a relatively new girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You send out a, a Christmas card with the two of you posed in a bunch of different... You obviously had a professional photographer take this, or somebody who's very good. It looks yeah, professional. Yeah, her stepdad, he's a very talented photographer. It's, uh, yeah, you're set in a lot of different scenes. I, in, I'm coming up on 16 years of marriage... And before that, my wife and I dated f- about four years. I was exclusive to her, found out later she was not to me. But that, that, that's beside the point. It's hurtful. Um, I've never once done this. We've <laughs> never posed for pictures together. We've never sent out a photo card. Oh, well, you do. Really? I, I can tell you why you've never done that. Why is that? Because you're not a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw this. I'm like, these guys have been dating about 45 minutes. <laughs> and I already put this out, so I'm not bringing this home. I don't want my wife to see it. You, think, made, a, you, made, you made a couple's Christmas card? Uh, yeah, well. Oh, it's the kiss of death. <laughs> well, believe, believe me. I mean, as you could tell by your disbelief at this, this was not really my doing necessarily. It wasn't my idea or my execution but oh, you stand up for yourself will you well, i'm fine oh, with it but, it but it's yeah, not I like, like i i was like hey we got to do this we got to do a card because i'd never done a card either even when i was married Josh. Well, I, I was gonna ask you that i'm like you yeah. were married for how long were you married for uh well we were together about 10 11 years okay and married for i think four four years mm-hmm. four no we years. never once did a christmas card can i see the dana christmas card yeah this is so upsetting <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, oh, these no. make me look terrible. When, oh, no. <laughs> when Dana asked, uh, I, I imagine, for my address, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, they're, they, they're probably Christmas cards. And I, I looked at my boyfriend. I was like, should, should, we be, should we do the Christmas cards, too? And he's like, he's like, no, you don't do those until you pop out one, pop out one of those kids. And then people want to see the kid. That's exactly <laughs> what me and my girlfriend said. I was like, oh, okay. But, like, I'd be totally down to take some cute Christmas photos with my dog. Oh, well, this is, I'd love I that. I don't want it to get lost in the mix. It was very sweet of you guys, <laughs> you to do, honestly. It's terrible. But the first thing I thought was, God, my wife has been asking to do something like this. And I don't want to go pose for pictures oh, or something like that. Oh, she's been asking to? Well, yeah, you can't like bring that home. relentlessly. But over the years, she said, we should do that. We should take family pictures. And I know the kids don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Oh, and now <laughs> it's the winter time, so you really don't want to do it if you have to take them now. Oh. You got to be outside, yeah. Hey, you got to be outside in the cold. Hey, You're walking Here's around the- in the snow. Here's oh. the all toughen up, for Christ's sake. You can take a 20-minute Oh, it Put sucks. a coat on. Oh, he, he, here's the only thing that's keeping me from coming over and choking Dana till he turns blue like Wapple's sister did in 1997. <laughs> that's about the time. You want to know what's keeping me from choking you out? What's that? Oh, unless maybe I'm not seeing it. Uh, where's the uh, Where's the holiday update letter on how oh. everyone's doing? Yeah, no, to not do that at all. Where's the holiday update letter? That brag letter of, oh, little Johnny got straight A's again. What? You wrote a holiday update letter, didn't you? No, we didn't. Oh, thank God. I can't believe people do that. The holiday up because yeah. of Facebook? That's just so, well, no, it's just weird to me. Yeah, I can't never, imagine being like, this is what's going on in my life I've now. I've never heard of that. <laughs> until, what do you mean you've never heard of it? Yeah, until, I've never seen it. I, until I started on the morning show and you guys talked oh. about like doing oh. the update stuff. I'm like, really? People do that? Little Johnny's now five years old. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I, I've got, he poops a, in the big boy toilet yeah. now. <laughs> there's a particular family that um, sends that to us. I mean, it's like you got to sit down and, and take a little while to get through everything. That's you know, going Greg on. got a gym membership in April, <laughs> but he pulled his hamstring playing basketball and... Uh, we get Christmas cards from this family, and they they stage everything. So they they hire out these actors to come over. They'll hire a photographer to take pictures, and then they'll get like the neighborhood to come over too and take photos for their Christmas cards. What do actors have to do with it? They like come in. They'll play like Santa or an elf, and they'll sit there oh. in the picture. Or oh, I see. And they do like those dorky. You know, like... Uh, to be the, honest with you, Waffle, I don't think I could hear another word. The, the dog's, like, pulling the scarf, you know, of someone. It's Cutesy like, oh, stuff. No, oh. Give that's me a, that back. You, the adorable. dog does make the Dana photos. The dog is <laughs> There's in. more photos of the dog on that thing than there are me. There should be. The, the dog is the star of the show. Oh, this one's got a backwards head. I thought that was the dog. That's oh. you. <laughs> that is you. Do no, I see it a, was very kind of you, though. Do I see another Christmas card over there, Josh, yeah. that we've received here at the radio station? There's one more I wanted to recognize, and that's our friend 
friend Electrician Jesus, who actually had a hard day earlier this week. He woke up to his 11-year-old vomiting all over the walls and floor of his bathroom. Oh, God. Going on. Did he see Dana's Christmas okay. card? <laughs> yeah, he heard about it. <laughs> he heard about it? It's like, haven't, haven't they just been date, dating since the beginning of the month? Yeah, that's about it. Electrician Jesus family Christmas card. Can I see that? Yeah. Did, did you, is that okay? Is that... Uh, I think that's... Is that appropriate? There's no dudes on it or anything. Is it appropriate for me to just scan over this guy's Christmas card? He's got a couple of kids... Subaru Parts Jesus, 20 years married last month, never sent out a holiday card. Don't feel bad at all. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's one person who thinks that my family has never taken a picture. Like, said, oh, great, now your kids are going to have no pictures of the family. <laughs> no, we've taken pictures, <laughs> but yeah. we've never gone and had a professional say, all right, now you put your hand on your chin and look surprised. Yeah. And you over- <laughs> we've never done that before. Uh, Josh's yeah. funeral, they're trying to find photos. <laughs> yeah. ah, never taken one anything. picture. If Josh- anybody has a picture of Josh in the background somewhere, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you and your wife, Josh, uh, do like engagement photos? No. No? Okay. Oh, yeah. And you don't have wedding photos either. Because since, uh, they were stolen. Yeah. Yeah, so we tried there. Um, Because I always thought, like, I'd, I'd be pretty comfortable with, like, um, having somebody take photos of me, whatever. Because, you know, I, I grew up with that kind of stuff. Selfies all the time. And it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had to do in my life. Like, I, I would like to avoid it. Those were nice photos, though. Thank you. Yeah. I hate involved- yeah, shout out to John. <laughs> yeah, didn't you involve a pickup truck or something? Or- yeah, yep. Yeah, those were some of the favorites. Yeah, like dropped the tailgate. Yeah, I like that one. Those were cool. Dana, this also said it was d- this card was designed by someone. You had a designer? No, it's just you go on the website and it's got a template and you can add like the oh, four pictures. They just you throw want. that on there. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, don't do this to us again. <laughs> <laughs> you know who uh, I always get a kick out of? A friend of mine who spends half the year in Florida, half the year in Minnesota. I've told you about this friggin' low life. Well, in the winter time, he's in Florida. And so Christmas time, he's in Florida, and he sends Christmas cards. But it's so much effing fun. He he takes the same, what's the word I'm trying to grab here, the same uh, uh, setup, you know. Uh, can I see that friggin' card again? Uh, Which one? The one that I can't reach right here. Forget it. You know how you got you got various yeah yeah you got you got your multiple pictures on on the card. You, you, that's yeah, like I'm, electrician Jesus. They've got a lot of stuff going on. It's the same. I can't think of the word, but collage template yeah. is that the word? Mm-hmm. Same setup as you as you get from a family Christmas card. But what he does is he goes back. He's always been the kind of guy to take pictures at parties ever since we were kids. He'll go back and grab old photos of us from ninth grade um, or a college picture of someone throwing up in the corner <laughs> or a bizarre picture of him and a celebrity. You know, uh-huh. one one year he sends me the Christmas card and it's like me and, and it's me, the, the, the variety of pictures, me and some girl that I had sex with twice at St. Cloud State in a picture together, right? <laughs> yeah. Where I, I look and I go, is that the girl that I had sex with twice at St. Cloud? <laughs> and then the next picture is him and Jesse James Dupree from Jackal <laughs> at a Jackal show. And then the next one will be like uh, one of our Stranger Buddies third grade picture. That's that's the fun that for is me. Fun. When it, I don't know. The guy just, he's odd and he has a lot of free time and he has a lot of pictures. He makes this gimmick work. This is pretty cool. Uh, got a text here saying, I know someone who remakes remakes band album covers as their Christmas cards. They dress up in stage and area to look exactly like the album. Oh, that's cool. That's creative. F me. That is something. The family Christmas card. That's how you do it. Well, most of us wait until it's a family. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how common that is, though. Couples cards. I mean, you know, it's not like you guys have been dating 10 years and just decided we're going to be together. We're not getting married. Mm -hmm. You've just been dating a short amount of time. Yeah, since January. Have you looked back at uh, at previous Christmases um, for your girlfriend and seen if there's pictures of other dudes? No, she said on the front, because I I mentioned that I was like, I've never done this before. She's like, I've I've done it myself, but I've never done it with a guy before, so... I guess gonna, that's we're going to isolate that for the record. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun to, fun to come back to that yeah, at some that point. Was, yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a bad one. Well, there you go. Thank you, Electrician Jesus. Yep. Thank you, Impaler. 
And as I said already, Dana, don't ever do this to us again. <laughs> I, I do appreciate it. That was very nice of you to send this. Well, we thought, well, because we originally sent them to Josh or to uh, Wapple and Ashley because my girlfriend's gotten to know them and their significant others quite a bit at different events. And then we were walking out of the holiday party, Josh, and my girlfriend goes, you, you need to text Josh or his address. His wife is so cool. I really want to send them a card. My <laughs> wife is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, that's wife. sweet. They got to know each other a little bit, and she's enamored with you because your wife is awesome. And she obviously thinks that you're cool, too. She's she had awesome. a great time bonding with you at the casino. Yeah, we had, a, we had fun talking. Mm-hmm. Bonding. All right, yeah, so tomorrow's the big day, Toys for Tatas. I would imagine that around this time tomorrow, um, we we might already have Dana and Ashley out on location at Rick's Cabaret, and we can check in and say hello. But if you're planning on showing up, like we said, the day, the day that doesn't make any sense, the doors uh, open at 6. You might see Dana and Ashley roaming around at that point. The rest of us are going to come over after 9, and we'll get the uh, party started. Don't uh, forget to bring that unwrapped toy to donate. And like Josh was saying earlier, keep in mind, if you haven't gone shopping yet, keep in mind stuff for the older kids. And then we'll raise some hell. My favorite point of the morning, 8 a.m., when we hear the cheers when the bar Oh, opens. my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that is a good feeling. And I like it like 7.40, 7.45, as you can kind of see the crowd kind of shifting, you know, away from the main stage, kind of getting like angling to get their position at the bar for <laughs> yeah. right when it hits 8 a.m. Yeah, they leave the Eggs Benedict at the buffet, mm-hmm. and they walk straight over to the bar. I won't be getting involved in that. I won't be getting involved in that line for the bar. You know, like you said, by quarter to eight, 20 to eight, everyone's like, I won't be doing that. So I'm going to show up drunk. (laughs) I was going to say, you're probably going to pregame, right? Yeah, save money. I'm going to show up drunk. You're a great crowd. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come right back on the program ski. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Time for the stupid news, huh? All right, then. We are snow penis fans around here. The half ass Morning Show supports the creation of snow penises. That's good winter humor for sure. We do. We support the creation of snow penises. But you got to show some effing respect when it comes to where you erect your hilarious snow penis. If and when we get any significant snow here in town this winter, keep that in mind. Show some respect. As far as where your snow, how do you say it, snow dong goes up. Leave it to a couple of sneaky ass Russian kids to not have any respect. Uh, It's always a problem with the Russians. Always. Two Russian teenagers have been arrested after carving a 100 damned foot snow wang right in front of a police monument that pays tribute to cops who have died in the line of duty. <laughs> you yeah, dickheads. Qu- quickly loses its humor. What the hell's the matter with the Security cameras caught him in the act. I never saw a picture of their creation. Did you, Josh? I mean, by damn, a 100-footer? No. Never saw a picture of it. I wonder if... Due, due to the disrespect, they chose not to publish it in the stories. Yeah, I imagine that's the case. Local cops were pissed, as you might imagine. So they were on this right effing now. They tracked down these two kids quick. A guy and a gal. Both of them are 19 in Russian years. <laughs> After the cops nabbed them, disrespectful little peckerheads that they are, They posted a video of the two kids in front of the monument, and the kids are confessing and apologizing for what they had done. I didn't think the dude looked very sincere in his apology. I'm just going to toss that out there. I I 100% agree. It kind of looks like he's being a D-bag about it. Yeah. The just girl like, did seem remorseful. Maybe she's just a great actress. I don't uh, know. You know, the guy, he's 19. You know uh, how some people, I guess, be, I mean, how you could be 19 or 99. Some people just, they can't fathom how you didn't find their joke funny. No matter how disrespectful it is. You know people like that, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, they're... Oops. You just don't get it. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry you were offended. Yeah, the, yeah. like you're the problem, not me. The girl says, we offer our deepest apologies for what we did. The guy 
said, we didn't know about the location of the monument. We repent of what we did. It won't happen again. Despite their apologies, they're going to have to suck it up. Criminal charges are likely. And from reading the story, a lot of folks, a lot of folks in town don't believe that they didn't know about the cop tribute mon- monument. It's mammoth. Right. I'm going to take yeah. a stab that they live somewhere in the neighborhood. How do you not know? It's a 50-foot high statue of a police officer. Yeah, come on. There are tablets everywhere carved with the names of cops who have died in the line of duty. In gold lettering that reflects in the sun. There's no way they didn't know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, don't here. give me that. We didn't. Yeah, they're just upset that no one's fallen all over them for their hilarious joke. They're offended by that. Dick move. I get it. <laughs> Baudette Fishing Guide oh, Jesus. I didn't even mean that. You didn't? No. Oh, I thought maybe you wrote that down. No. Uh, Baudette Fishing Guide Jesus, he sent in, this is the first snow penis of the year that I've seen. He uh, put one in his wife's parking spot a, uh, a while ago. Let's see. Not bad. Not bad at all. He's got the balls in there. Looks like he might have added some pubes. Oh, I remember the first kid that did that in elementary school. I thought that he was a comedic legend. <laughs> But so up in Baudette, they had a, had enough snow for this dude to make a snow dome. Yeah. Good for you. You guys ever been in a situation where you effed up and you had to stand in front of whoever it was that you wronged and give them an official apology? Hmm. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Um, it was something that happened in school. I got suspended for it. Um, me and my friend were being a-holes and we took um somebody else's belongings and it did not it did not it was not as funny as we thought it was going to be you stole Um, some things yeah and then i mean there was like some other things that weren't so great that i don't really want to talk about but fair enough i I did end up having to apologize like face to face and that that's a very uh it's like a humbling experience you realize oh it works Uh, it works because i felt awful i hear you I can't think of anything. I mean, I did some things back when I was a kid. And it would be strange if this was something you did as a grown person. Obviously, this this scenario, nine times out of ten, is going to play out when you're a kid. You F up, you F somebody's stuff up, whatever, and you have to make an official apology. You stand in front of the person. Um, I, I can't think of anything except for one story. And I wasn't directly involved, but it it's kind of cute. Uh, being a YZ guy... Our number one rival in, in sports was those prick bastards from Minnetonka, the Skippers. And we beat them in football one year when I was a junior or senior in high school. And a bunch of the dudes from our football team got some beers in them after the game and then went over to Minnetonka High School and painted the anchor. Mm. In front of their high school, they have an anchor because they're the Skippers. I don't know if it's still there, but it was there in the late 80s. And that was a, kind of a tradition going way back uh, at Wise Out of High School. If you beat Minnetonka in a big game, you go over there when nobody's looking and you paint the anchor blue and gold, which were Wise Out of and still are Wise Out of colors. So we beat Tonka in this big football game. Some of the players went over there and painted the anchor. Uh, somebody busted them, saw them doing it, and all hell breaks loose. The football coach at YZ at the time ordered those players to go to Minnetonka High School in front of their football team and apologize. (laughs) And they did. Uh, The funny part of the story is, you know, all five, six guys took their turn apologizing. And the last guy from the YZ group to make his personal apology started to cry. (laughs) <laughs> oh, no. Like you were just saying, Ashley, didn't you just say you you, you feel like crying? Yeah. I, th- I think you said that. Maybe awful. A- oh, so the, no, the last guy, he's an 18, 17-year-old guy. You know, you should be above that. You know, if, I don't know if above is the word, but you should be more mature. He starts crying. And, okay, 
the other guys, the other Wyzetta guys, were so embarrassed by this. They oh, just yeah. busted this guy's balls forever about it. <laughs> Dude, you cried in front of a whole football team. Yeah, yeah. they're like, how do you expect us to be taken yeah. seriously next year, dude, on the football field? And you cried in front of him, bro. And he's like, I couldn't help it. I oh, felt it. No. oh, no. Nowadays at college, they would make a fat head of the kid crying. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah he'd become stands. a meme. Yeah. You're right. Like, if the Michael, people would forget about the Michael Jordan one. Yeah. The Villanova crying girl. <laughs> I see that everywhere. The Michael Jordan crying bit. Yeah. Was yeah. he... W- what was he really crying that hard one day, or is that like a damn? What do you call it? Uh, what's the term in the like business? Photoshop. Photoshop. I thought he was. Yeah, was I think it? it was a Hall of Fame ceremony, I believe. Uh, Let me look it up. But yeah, he's really letting her buck. He's really crying. Yeah, I see that all all the ball games. All right. Yeah, it was a speech during the Hall of Fame induction. Oh my God. Well. I love that the crying Jordan meme has its own Wikipedia page. Yeah. It's surprisingly uh, thorough. Great. <laughs> he should cry. He's been such a prick his whole life. <laughs> Maybe he should apologize to some folks. Yeah. All right, run this by your bros tonight at your neighborhood bar and see uh, if and they're up for it. Because I think we'd all like this record to be held by an American. Two Australian dudes set the world record for hitting the most bars in 24 hours. And they set the record, even though one of them splashed all over himself two hours into the deal. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the all-time puke and rally. Yeah, you'd think you'd for sure pace yourself in something like this. I guess maybe he was too excited. They set the record for hitting the most bars in 24 hours. The two bros uh, go by the names of Harry Koros and Jake Loiterton. What's the most any of you have ever hit in one day? I, I, ours, for, or for me, it was definitely work-related here, like on one of the pub crawls, so maybe four. I have um, no idea. Yeah, I have no clue. I mean, I've definitely cleared at least ten. Oh, we, we've, <gasps> yeah. 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 This, this weekend, I've got a bus crawl coming up, and there's going to be like eight, eight to ten, I think, that we're hitting. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, a bus crawl is, I think that's cheating. We're talking yeah. about just good old-fashioned bouncing in and out of bars. Well, if, that, if that's the case, if you're, then maybe three tops. And I think I was with you as well, Nick, on that one. I mean, one of my favorite Four? things to do, one of my favorite things to do when I was younger was kind of drive out west. Like, say, Rogers or St. Michael. Yep. Hit a couple three there. On our way back into town, hit a couple in Corcoran. Go to Hamill, hit the In Cahoots. Maybe hit Medina Ballroom, come back into Wyzetta, hit the Legion, hit the Muni, hit Sunsets. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah like on mm-hmm. a Sunday or a Saturday? Yep, Sunday fun day. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, total all those up. I mean, we probably hit 10 in a day. I don't do that anymore. We would always go, um, my mom's family's in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, so we would go to Wisconsin bars, and we would always do the shake of a day. Shake a day. Or shake for a chicken, and I think we hit like seven then. Yeah, I mean, when you're young, you can... You can make it work. So anyway. It's a lot different for me. Nowadays, it's like I'll go to Mad Cow for some pot stickers, maybe Subway for a BMT, and then we'll hit Cherry Berry right (laughs) afterwards. That sounds way better than a bar crawl. (laughs) No hangover, Ashley. (laughs) Fast food bar crawl. (laughs) These two Australian dudes who set the world record for hitting the most bars in 24 hours, they are 26 years old, both of them. That's a prime age for beer drinking, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I could put away Steve Weiser's at 26. The two of them rolled through 99 bars in one day in Sydney, Australia. Oh, Dang. that bothers me. Like, you couldn't just do one more. <laughs> well, they thought they tried they, to. I'll get there. Okay. It wasn't easy. By damn, it wasn't. Like I said, Larry, the two guys, Harry. Uh, <laughs> not, not, it's not Larry. It's Harry. Harry and Jake were the guys' names. Uh, Harry cacked after just two hours of drinking. You probably heard of records like this before. Uh, They had to toss down one drink at every bar to make it official. It doesn't have to be an alcoholic drink, as far as I know. They broke the previous record of 78 bars in 24 hours. That was set last year by some prick uh, named uh, Heinrich. So the old record was 78 from last year. They pumped her all the way up to 99. They didn't just do it for the attention. They also raised money for a multiple sclerosis research type of a deal. So here's how it all went down. They started at midnight. 
Most bars in Sydney close at 2 a.m., but some do not, obviously, so they hit some bars between midnight and 2. 2 a.m. is when Harry already (laughs) threw up on himself. (laughs) Okay, so he gets a little bit of a break. He gets a little bit of a break? Right, because if the bars are only open until... Well, like I said, most of them are open until 2, not... All of them go deeper than that. Oh, wow. Sorry if I misled you. So cool for Australia. <laughs> yeah. So they mostly walked between pubs. They took a break between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. So they drink from midnight to 5 a.m. They take a break for four hours. They eventually broke the record in the early evening. And their goal was 100 bars. They hit 99. When it was all said and done, they thought they had done 100, but they miscounted. Oh. As you might imagine. Sure. <laughs> Details get a little, <laughs> a, little, a little fuzzy after, uh, you know, the first 48 bars. Right. They spent a total of $990 on drinkies. They were going every other, it sounds like, at, because you don't always have to drink booze to set this record. So one bar, they'd have a water, then they'd have booze. Then they'd alternate like that all the way down the line. So they they switched it up. And they kind of had to, really, because they didn't want to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For God's sake. A hundred drinks in 24 hours. If you're not Andre the Giant, that's <laughs> likely going to be trouble. So, and also, I guess... Sydney, Australia has some strict rules about intoxication. If they would have gotten too loaded, a lot of the bars wouldn't have let them in. They pissed a lot, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> according to the story. They said breaking the seal is not a myth. Once they started urinating, they could not stop. <laughs> That's how it goes. It is. Mm-hmm. So, bottom line, they're world champions until some YouTube dork, you know, who's lacking attention or, you know, whoever comes along to snap that record because they don't they don't sit around very long. Like I said, the old record was only a year old and the way social media works and, you know, this uh, they won't hold it for long, I bet. But they got it right now. One hundred in a stinking 24 hour span. So the easiest cities well, it would be easy, but the most opportunity cities in America, Atlantic City, they're open 24 hours a day. The bars same with Vegas. Same with Miami, and same with New Orleans. So those would be your best bets if you really wanted to try to hit 100 in a day. Yeah, you know, uh, when I was spending time in the South, New Orleans and Mississippi, uh, that was an eye-opener because there was one particular roadhouse that we hit a lot in Mississippi that was open until 5 (laughs) a.m. Oh, that's not good. And then they would reopen. They would shut the doors sweep up the teeth and the blood and the broken glass and reopen, I think, at nine. And man, I did some damage to myself in those days. I can imagine. Real damage. I wonder how much money... These guys were doing it for charity. I wonder how much money they raised. They didn't mention that. Yeah, I'd be interested to know. They did not mention that cubby. Once they paid the bar tab, they made like eight bucks. Yeah. (laughs) Here's a listener who says she and her husband do their 12 bars of Christmas every year. I used to do that, cool. and I was saying, I was think, I don't think I ever made it past like bar seven or eight. You get to a point where you're like, all right, I'm content just staying here now. I don't need to keep moving around. I've never heard of the 12 bars of Christmas, but this listener says she and her husband do it every year, and they did their 12 bars of Christmas last weekend with her 76-year-old mother. Fun. And they actually hit 13. Oh, wow. Because Grandma wanted to party. Yeah, Grandma's got one more in her. <laughs> yep. That's from Bates Her Own Hook and Cleans Her Own Fish. Jesus. Ah, uh, speaking of Australia, here's a strange way to damn near get yourself killed dead. Don't you know? In Australia, again, a strange way to nearly get yourself killed. A teenage kid almost got killed at the beach when he accidentally picked up a killer octopus and put it in his pocket. He's an 18-year-old kid named... Good Lord, with the... With, what were those kids' names who with the, with the beer-drinking record? Harry and Jake. Harry Koros and Jake Loiterton. Listen to this kid, the one who almost got killed by putting an octopus in his pocket. His name is Jacob 
Eggington. What is it with the <laughs> What's it with the names over there? <laughs> Hello. Oh, I'm Jacob Eggington. <laughs> All right, he's an 18-year-old kid. He was at a place called Showwater Beach in Australia. He was looking for cute seashells with his brother and his little niece. He's picking up seashells and such, and he's putting them in his pocket. He accidentally picked up a critter called a blue-ringed octopus, which is one of the most venomous damn things on planet Earth. It's not terribly big. It was hiding inside a shell. He luckily spotted the octopus a few minutes later. And also luckily, he didn't accidentally hand that shell over to his little niece or it might have stung her ass to death. But the little bastard octopus did bite this Jacob kid, Eggington. He didn't feel it. He saw the bite marks and he was in big trouble. Paramedics swung on in, he was taken to the hospital, and they saved his life. The word is, if he hadn't noticed the bite marks, he would have been dead within a half hour. Whoa. This octopus that he got bit by is like the cutest little thing ever. I would not think that it was so deadly. That's how they get you, Ashley. Yep. Like I wanna be its little I wanna be its friend. How scary is that that it doesn't even hurt and it kills you within a half hour? Yeah. Unbelievable. I would never Amazing notice something survived. like that. Not that they'd ever kill you, but that's the same gimmick that those bastard otters do day after day. <laughs> you know the rivalry I have with otters? I do, I know. <laughs> I love they it. They come swinging by. They swim by. I'm standing on the shore of the river. I'm fishing. He comes swimming by. <laughs> so cute. Hey. He's on his back. He's showing me his belly. He's holding a rock on his chest. Oh, I love when they do that. He's so cute. They look at you. They go, what's going on? Are you fishing? Great. That sounds great. <laughs> and then while I'm going, hey, Mr. Otter with the rock on his chest, his buddy's stealing all my minnows. <laughs> <laughs> what a hustle. Oh, I turned on him years ago. I said, I'm not falling for it anymore. You're not cute. Yeah. I mean, okay, fine. You're still pretty cute. They are cute. <laughs> they are cute. But I'm not We're not friends. <laughs> Uh, all right, so this kid might have been dead. Experts on all the things that could murder you in Australia say that the blue-ringed octopus is great at hiding and at killing folks. So I guess if you ever go there on vacation and you go to the beach, you might as well cancel Christmas. You're dead. Cancel Christmas. What movie? Friday. <laughs> Colors. 1988. Sean Caddy Robert Duvall. Slapshot. I said colors. Well, you did say colors. Yeah. I was just going through the app. Oh. Blues Brothers. You know what uh you know what else uh, will kill you just as soon as look at you? An orca. Yeah, I heard they're not they're not very friendly. Otherwise known as a killer whale, an orca. I kinda like um I imagine this is probably where you're going with it. I like that they're just like taking revenge on the humans. You like this? That yeah. They're, they're killing humans uh, by, <laughs> well, by the, by the I'd mouthful? I'd love more information revenge. on this. Revenge. Re- re- revenge to the orca. Yeah, because, you know, they don't get treated very well. We, we haven't treated them uh, very well historically? No, no, I we wasn't aware not. of that. No, yeah, it's not very nice. <laughs> they're killing human beings by the mouthful, and Ashley's over there. She's leading the, uh, the pep rally for the orcas. <laughs> She's holding a pendant that says Team Orca on it. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag pro Orca. <laughs> from what I understand from this uh, here next story, orcas are a continuing problem for sailors in the waters off Spain and Portugal. Josh and I almost chose that life. Wouldn't that be something? You <laughs> yep. can picture us doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely, <laughs> totally. yeah. Before we signed our contracts here with 93X, we made one last phone call to see if they needed any sailors off the coast of Spain and Portugal. <laughs> they didn't have enough sunscreen up. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we got our own harpoons, we swear. <laughs> I bought a parasol and everything. I was ready. <laughs> Oh, man, we would have been the cabin boys, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> they would have just tuned us up and drug us behind the ship on a on a makeshift raft and thrown beer bottles at us and yeah. molested they, us. Oh, no. <laughs> they would have likely molested us. They, they would have cut us to make us chum for the orcas. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Remember that scene from Cabin Boy where Chris Elliott's being towed behind the ship and they're throwing their empty beer cans at him and forcing him to dance? Anybody? No. Yeah. 
Cabin Boy? Cr- uh, it's Chris been a number Elliott? of years. Genius. Oh, God. You're one of them uh, fancy lads, aren't you? God help us, that movie just busted me up inside. Remember when he cleaned his pipes <laughs> and then announced it to the world? <laughs> uh, and, you know, sorry to blow up here, but, you know, for you people who go to Brainerd, for you people who go to Brainerd International Raceway for the NHRA drag races, which was something I did for 25 straight years, and we just had the time of our lives, absolute lawless riot. You know, if you if you know the gimmick up there, you know that a lot of folks make big, grand party vehicles, right? Yeah. We had a minivan. It was, uh, what the hell did we call it? Uh, oh, the Zoo Patrol. The Zoo Patrol. And we had a big dildo on the hood. Anyway, uh, we had a party vehicle, but... One year we were talking about what we should do for a party vehicle. And one of my friends says, well, let's make a fake ship. And then uh, he was telling this to me. He said, and then we'll put you uh, on a raft behind the ship and we'll throw our empty beer cans at you like Cabin Boy. And I said, no, that doesn't sound that great. (laughs) How did I become Cabin Boy? Why am I getting the... If you know Cabin Boy and you know BIR, you understand the last five minutes of this program. If you don't, you're changing the channel. <laughs> okay. Killer Whales, Orcas. Terror- I wonder if Cabin Boy holds up. I loved that oh, movie. Oh, it, it does, Josh. You've seen it recently? Yes. Yes. But then again, Chris Elliott could show up and just read the phone book and I'd be laughing my balls off. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm with you. All right. Orcas killing sailors off the waters of Spain and Portugal. And the sailors are looking for new ways to ward off the prick orca attacks. And one of them says that blasting thrash metal might be the answer. Music has been taken out of this portion of the Half-Assed Morning Show podcast for licensing reasons. Listen to this riff. Yeah, if you're podcasting, check out Megadeth Tornado of Souls. You'll never be the same. See, you know, when I hear songs like this or anything off of... uh, countdown to extinction or anything off of euthanasia i get mad when i hear people say well you know dave mustaine could never sing what are you talking about listen to rust in peace euthanasia or countdown to extinction the some bitch could sing i know it's a little different sounding but listen to this prick f me <laughs> in the middle of the compliment you said listen to this prick i love it <laughs> <laughs> See, if I'm an orca and you start playing thrash metal, I'm coming to you. But, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I want to know who's really cool out here. <laughs> cool sailor. Oh, Dixon Cider Jesus texted. Uh, maybe Ashley doesn't want to hear this, but he says, that song by Megadeth makes me want to kill more orcas. <laughs> <laughs> so at least one sailor has had luck with this. He cranks up thrash metal. Well, he, he defined it here in the story as European thrash metal. I don't know what the hell. He cranks it up, and he said the orcas stayed away from his boat. But then again, there's others saying, yeah, we tried the metal thing, and it didn't work. But there's at least one guy out there on the open seas that says, at least try it. Because they're knocking yachts over and killing folks everywhere. It's kind of like, you know, at the bars where they'll play classical music or something when they want you to get out, out you know, like downtown Minneapolis. At mm-hmm. least they used to. It's been a long time for me. Yep. White bar clothes, they still do that? I would do that. When I when I worked on, in St. Paul, I would do that. It just at a really uncomfortable level? Yeah, or it would be, they'd be blasting like whatever music they're playing and I would just slowly turn it down and see the look on their face and just go, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, my dad used to do this uh, with coyotes to keep him away from his, like, pole barn. Play, play metal? metal music? Yeah, he'd play metal music. What was his go-to? He actually put on 93X a lot of the time. Did, it, did it work? It up. So, like, Sound yeah. of Silence by Disturbed, that cover? <laughs> no, it was later, later, 93X. The Killers? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Something by Five Finger Death Punch, perhaps. God, I love The Killers. Foo Fighters? <laughs> so, yeah, there's one dude out there on the open seas who said he cranked up some metal and the orcas ended up dry humping his boat so bad he had to be rescued. So you you don't know what you're going to get. I can't guarantee you. But, you know, we start talking about sailing and metal. You might be wondering if there are any great metal songs about sailors or sailing. And, of course, the one that comes to mind for me is The Rime of the Ancient Mariner by Iron Maiden, a song that actually scared me a little bit the first time I heard it, which is embarrassing because I was 12 effing years old already when that record came out. But that song is creepy. Not Christopher Cross, huh? 
takes me away <laughs> to where I've always wanted to be. You know what I'm talking about. Is See, it? Bruce Dickinson just got married? What? How did somebody lock him down? That's what I wanted. Why the <laughs> hell would Bruce Dickinson ever get married? Uh, it's We'll never know. Some people say that about you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> just as shocked. Yes, they have. They've said it to my face, Cubby. To my face. Do I have time for one more, or should we just move on? Well, why not go for one more? Because I, I don't. Because I don't want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, easy enough. Although then. the last They're two excited. compliment each the other so compl- well, they do, Josh. So we're gonna save them for tomorrow. They're complimentary. There'll be complimentary stories tomorrow in the stupid news. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. All right, here's what happened on the tipped puck out of play. Watch where it lands. It comes to a stop on top of the glass. That's actually one of our ice level mics. You're never going to see that again. Was that the dude who fired a chicken nugget into the crowd? No, that was. A, this was a, from the Blackhawks-Predators game Tuesday night. A puck landed balancing oh. on a microphone yeah, yeah, on yeah, the glass. Yeah, yeah. That's up on 93x.com. Weird deal. <laughs> but that chicken nugget thing was funny, too. <laughs> yeah. Later on, we're going to talk about a chicken nugget that ended up in the crowd at a hockey game. Yeah, we got the audio for that, too. But yeah, that, that deal, the audio you just played there, they got some fancy schmancy microphone camera? What was it? Yeah, a microphone. The on-ice mic, they called it. Puck goes flying up in the air, and it just bloop, lands nicely. And perfectly. On. Yeah, perfectly on top of the glass. That'll never happen again. You heard it here first. What the hell am I doing here? Hey, both of our basketball clubs won last night. This was a lot of fun for me. You know how I like to watch basketball on my television. And I got to see the Wolves beat San Antonio. You know, things were a little iffy there. Can I tell you about the... The newest Wolves fan all of a sudden, for whatever reason. Hit me with it. Your godson. Yesterday's like, oh, we got to watch the Wolves. I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. I've, I've never heard you talk about the Timberwolves before. What makes you want to watch now? Are you a fair weather fan? And he, he admitted he is a fair He's weather fan. He's a fair fan. weather fan. Yeah, he wants to watch now that they're doing so well. That's great. That's great. Eventually, I'm going to get him chewing tobacco and drinking beer. and. <laughs> oh, he's already moved on to the harder stuff. Is he on to yeah. the hard stuff now? That's great that you're... Uh, your son, more importantly, my godson, is watching the Timberwolves. He's into it now, but yeah, he fully took uh, responsibility for being a Fairweather That's fan. That's cute. They got a win over, uh, how do you call it, San Antonio, my Golden Gopher basketball club. Nice comeback win at home over Nebraska. They just looked incredible in the second half. And I, that's, I got to see the second half because I was watching the Wolves game in its entirety. So wonderful for the Golden Gophers. Uh, the Miracle on Ice 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, I mean the Wild, are at Vancouver <laughs> tonight, 9 o'clock on Bally, uh, how do you call it, Sports North, uh, with the current win streak at what, five games? Is it four or five? Uh, four, I is, believe. Is it four? Okay, I thought it was five as well. Let me look. Well, uh, four or five, I can't remember. And, and, of course, coming up in a half hour when Randy Shaver jumps in, we'll talk all about tonight's Thursday night football game that I'm actually excited about. I know you guys take a dump over, oh, it's not a very good (laughs) Thursday night. I love it when two bad football teams can match up with, you know, terrible backup quarterbacks. We got that tonight, Pittsburgh and New England. Josh's News is coming up next. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. All it takes is an imagination of a criminal and a phone. And those two things have been around for a long, long time. Why swatting is now all of a sudden becoming such a popular thing, I think it's a question that's going to have to be answered. At least 34 schools and Jewish facilities in Minnesota received fake bombing and shooting threats. And what the Bureau of Criminal uh, Investigation, that is, said yesterday, appears to be coordinated swatting incidents. According to the BCA, the emailed threats were each almost identical and no incident, thankfully, turned out to be real. When these calls come in, generally they're of a very large magnitude or reporting a large magnitude incident. There's going to be a lot of resources that are going to respond to that. Imagine the number of man hours that were wasted and the calls that didn't get answered while law enforcement was responding to these. The calls came in through around the state yesterday. If you're unfamiliar with the term, swatting is defined as an attempt to elicit a significant law enforcement response to a particular address to a false report of violence. Coincidentally, the alleged swatting attempts came after Bemidji students were forced to shift to e-learning Wednesday morning or yesterday morning when authorities received a credible threat against the district. 
at this time. The incidents have not been linked. Earlier this year, a hoax shooting report caused a frightening incident at Banfield Elementary School in Austin when police breached the doors of the school believing an active shooter incident was ongoing. That incident was one of eight hoax shooting calls made in a two-day period in Minnesota back then. And a Detroit Lakes man has been charged in a North Carolina swatting incident. It's alleged the 18-year-old placed the swatting call to Moore County, North Carolina Sheriff's Office, falsely reporting multiple people have been shot at a residence there. The call was traced back to Minnesota. Police say the teen made the report as revenge over a failed Internet relationship with a female. Failed relationship yeah. caused him to do this. Okay. That's <laughs> right. so, so now you understand. Yeah, oh yeah, now of course. We're all the same. Yeah, now it uh, makes, makes perfect sense. Today is National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, a day also sometimes referred to as Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day or simply Pearl Harbor Day. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Each year in the United States, National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day honors those who lost their lives when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor uh, December 7th, 1941. Organizations across the country honor the memory of Pearl Harbor with tributes. Survivors share their stories and join in reunions. Traditionally, the flag of the U.S. will be flown at half-staff until sunset to honor the more than 3,500 Americans who lost their lives or those wounded on that solemn day. What a hell of a deal. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I mentioned it, and I don't know this is 13 years old at this point, but I just started finally The Pacific, the HBO miniseries from, you know, a long time ago. And so far, it's been great. Few, I brought it up earlier, and a few people texted in and said they just started as well, you know, in honor of the day. And mm. a couple people are further along than me and said it holds up. Wapple, you said you watched it and loved it, too. Yeah, it's very, very So good. far, it's excellent. Mm-hmm. What streaming service is it on right now? What are you watching it on? HBO. HBO? Okay. Yeah. Or maybe it's, I'm watching it on Netflix. I can't remember. It's on Netflix, too. It, it was an HBO show, but maybe it's Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they just put it on to Netflix, getting ready for all this. That must be why. Yeah. It must be Netflix. A man and a woman were arrested after a flight from Orlando was diverted Tuesday because of an alleged bomb threat that passengers said they overheard being made during an argument between the two. Breeze Airways Flight 717 lifted off from Orlando to make its way to Providence, Rhode Island, when it had to make an emergency stop at Jacksonville International Airport. Passengers said a couple got into an argument right before the flight took off. One passenger said a man told the woman he was arguing with that he wanted to get off the plane. The flight was in the air for about 45 minutes, according to passengers, when the captain decided to divert the plane to Jacksonville about 5.30 p.m. because the word bomb was mentioned during the couple's argument. People were talking about claiming the other person had a bomb during their flight. The people around them heard the word bomb reported to the airline. They're obligated to land the plane. Video footage shared by passengers showed the man apologizing to other passengers as he was being placed in handcuffs. That must have been fun for everybody. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get out of going to Providence, Rhode Island, but even <laughs> so, what a hassle. What started out as a normal flight turned into a boogery bloodbath three hours into a flight from Canada to the Dominican when an airline captain suffered what they called an uncontrollable nosebleed. Don't ever say boogery bloodbath around me ever again. <laughs> well, I worked, I, I worked on the alliteration. Oh, it just about threw me right out of the building. Well, it's supposed to be shocking and disgusting. It was shocking. It was disgusting. Wapple liked it. He liked Bookery <laughs> Bloodbath. He's over there giggling like a damn school kid. Uh, it's better than some other options. I, I love how much you hate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the goal. Yeah. Uh, an off-duty pilot had to jump in to take his place. He did have an outfit on, so I'm assuming that's how they knew he was a pilot. I was very thankful that he was there. Can you imagine if they just assumed he was a pilot, but he was on his way to a costume party? <laughs> <laughs> The pilot suffered what they called an unusual nasal emergency on the air transit flight November 22nd. He's in the back of the aircraft right now with the flight attendant, but we need to get him on an ambulance immediately. As one of our other captains was on board with his family heading out on vacation, he was fit and able to take over the duties of the incapacitated captain for the remainder of the flight, the airline said. Captain, 47-year-old male, en route, he started to feel some stomach pain later, fainted or became incapacitated. The flight, with 299 people on board, landed without incident. So just a out-of-nowhere 
totally out of control nosebleed. Yeah, they said it just it wouldn't stop. Holy sh- uh, Nike. That's so scary. I don't know how people can even just get like a regular one. I've I've only had one nosebleed in my life and it was from like actually hitting my nose. But how people will just like casually get them, I'd be freaking out. It's usually the cocaine. Or oh, telekinesis. Oh. Yeah, that takes it out of you. I get them all the time from, like, the weather change. Actual it, nosebleeds, though? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah it'll be, like, because the air temperature's dry or, you know. I mean, th- that oh. happens. You know, I've never had actual nosebleed, but there's evidence of it if you're blowing your nose. Mm-hmm. My brother used to get bad nosebleeds when we were kids. It was hilarious. <laughs> was he a nose picker? I've heard that can I don't. I don't, I don't remember ever seeing him tear away. At his nose like that. I don't think so. He got nosebleeds and migraines, and I just had the time of my life. (laughs) A gigantic inflatable Santa Claus is drawing visitors to a Texas neighborhood, but its origins are a Yuletide mystery. Nobody lives on this lot, so we don't know who installed Santa, but isn't that fun? Isn't it a fun thing to have in our community? Residents near Tyler, Texas said the not-so-little St. Nick appeared on a vacant lot about a week ago and quickly became popular with residents, despite no one knowing where it came from. The giant Santa appears to be bigger than a house, and neighbors say it's been up for about a week, but they don't know how it got there. came around the corner here, and I thought, wow, what's happening? I was shocked when I first saw it, and I thought it was so big. My family and I liked to drive by it at night. He's definitely coming to our neighborhood, and he's never going to miss my house. Doesn't it kind of sound like one of those Christmas horror movies everybody's making now? This yeah. mysterious thing shows up. Something bad's going to happen. Regardless, it's been a hit with the community. Locals have been flocking to see the mysterious and massive Santa with photos of the decoration dwarfing children and adults alike spreading on social media. Yay! A spat of mysterious tire slashings in a small Italian village had locals <laughs> fearing it was a terrifying message from the mafia. Residents in a tiny town in southern Italy started complaining of the bizarre vandalism in July. In some cases, vehicles were targeted multiple times, leaving many people wondering whether the mafia was behind the destruction. It's been very puzzling, as we couldn't work out who would possibly be going around cutting tires or what the motive would be, the mayor said. It's a peaceful village, he added. In late October, four villagers in the same neighborhood reported their tires had been slashed, prompting police to conduct undercover patrols and install surveillance cameras as the reported attacks on the vehicles left the small town on edge. What was the mafia planning next, they wondered. Thankfully, the case was finally cracked last week, but this time the culprit was actually caught on camera. What locals in the Italian village thought was an ominous warning from the mafia turned out to be the work of a dog with gingivitis. Oh. A dog named Billy was never filmed. Never heard of that. Have you heard of that before? No, never. Uh, he was filmed gnawing several tires in the village. According to local vets who examined the pup, he had a severe case of gingivitis, and they believe that's what caused him to bite the tires to relieve the pain. Oh. Police don't intend to take any official action against Billy's owner, but it sounds like he has offered to compensate the people whose cars were damaged, and it's going to be expensive. Set this dog up with some uh, Listerine or something like that. (laughs) Wow, I've never heard of that. Uh, That sounds... I bet that dog was miserable. Yeah, he must have been into pain. (laughs) And everybody's obviously breathing a sigh of relief, thinking, is our town going to be under attack? Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, we've got an unfortunate update to the story of the cougar spotted roaming the Lowry Hill neighborhood in Minneapolis earlier this week. Sadly, the state patrol said it was struck by a motorist and killed early yesterday. Troopers reported to a crash on westbound 394 near Theodore Worth Parkway about 2.15 a.m. A driver had struck the Cougar, swerved, and hit the concrete median. Thankfully, the 53-year-old driver wasn't hurt, but the Cougar sadly didn't make it. Oh, yesterday morning by the Lower Hill Tunnel? Yeah. Oh, okay. I drove right past that sumbitch. Minneapolis city officials on Tuesday had warned residents about a cougar that may be traveling through the Cedar Lake Trail system. The sightings in the Lowry Hill neighborhood near Lake of the Isles was about a mile from where yesterday's crash happened. This marks only the second time a cougar had been spotted in Hennepin County since 2004. Well, that's a hell of a deal. Yeah, that's too, too bad. bad. Yeah, a few folks texted in later uh, yesterday morning said, hey, they just updated that story. That's oh, too bad. Yeah. Three men are accused of scheming to steal Dr. Pepper syrup from an Oklahoma City warehouse <laughs> and reselling it to a gas station. It really does. It blows my mind. It's crazy. I didn't even know it was happening. You go know, there like two or three yeah. times a day, honestly. I won't be going to that store anymore. I want to hang with those dudes. What the yeah. hell are they? They're just, dude, it's like they're Jay and Silent Bobbing it out in front yeah. of that place. 
<laughs> and now they're not so sure they want to go anymore. They smoked a ton of cigarettes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the alleged scheme led to more than $100,000 in stolen, stolen syrup, enough for many thousands of Dr. Pepper drinks. About 11 p.m. on the night of the robbery, a security guard at the Keurig Dr. Pepper facility noticed that a man climbed the parking lot fence and entered the warehouse. Responding officers found 32-year-old Jimmy Lee Robinson III outside the warehouse doors. Robinson, again, it's 11 p.m., claimed he was just exercising. Mm. The regional manager of the facility told police Robinson was a former employee who quit in August. He said thefts had been a problem since May with the main target, Dr. Pepper, five-gallon bag in a box. Each bag in a box is worth $98, and a pallet contains 40 of them. Robinson had a remote control to open the parking lot, but the manager said he changed out the remotes and started placing GPS trackers on the syrup boxes. Trackers showed pallets being dropped off at a gas station. Robinson told police he started stealing the product while employed at the facility. He stole about 10 pallets, or $39,200 worth of the product while still employed and then admitted to stealing two or three pallets a week after he quit. He told police he delivered the syrup to a gas station whose owner paid him 50 bucks for every box he delivered. Along with Robinson, the gas station owner, also alleged involved, was a 38-year-old man who police say texted Robinson about obtaining the syrup and getting money from the gas station owner. It was his idea. The 38-year-old, a former employee at the warehouse as well, was fired from that facility earlier this year. That's one of the weirder ones. An employee, yeah, it's something I wouldn't ever think of. Stealing Dr. Pepper syrup, sure. An employee at a Florida Sherwin Williams was caught on camera stealing up to three hundred dollars of paint. So it's possible he was caught red-handed because <laughs> he was stealing paint. Yeah, 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 I got it. Good one. Forget you guys. <laughs> the thirty-four-year-old was arrested Monday and charged with grand theft and dealing in stolen pro- uh, property after he's caught loading stolen paint into a customer's vehicle. No transaction was completed, and the customer was seen on security footage handing the now ex-employee cash during the exchange, so they knew something was up. During an interview with the Sherwin-Williams Loss Prevention Regional Manager, the man reportedly confessed to stealing about $47,000 in paint this year. Mm. That's a lot of paint. Two people are facing charges after Pittsburgh police say they were selling parking spaces that didn't belong to them. A lot of people park up here when there's events. Parking is always an issue here, but yeah, I mean, that's not great. It happened before Sunday's Steelers game against the Cardinals. Police received a call about 20 minutes before kickoff and found a man wearing a yellow vest and a woman waving a red flag in front of a parking sign. Mm-hmm. According to police, the lot's owner didn't give permission for it to be used, and the duo had no business being there. Somebody will be here taking cars, parking them, taking the money for the parking space, and when they're done with their game, they come back and get their car. They pay for parking, but it's not legal. The man and woman were detained for questioning, but police say the man took off. Doesn't matter, though. Both of them were identified, and charges are pending. Neighbors said this is far from the first time this same thing has happened in their area. How many times have you parked in a lot for a concert or a ball game and handed somebody a 20 and said to yourself, do they work here? Well, at least a couple. Yep, 100. <laughs> yeah, there's been times. A, a couple times where I thought, oh, man, I, I, my car might be towed when I come back out of here. <laughs> that didn't seem legit at all. Mm-hmm. NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Owens, 50. C. Thomas Howell, still golden at 57. Isn't he something? He is. Hall of Fame catcher Johnny Bench, 76. Birthdays in the Brotherhood. Happy birthday to Shower Beer Jesus from Shower Beer Jesus. I'd personally like to say happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Shannon. Part-time electrician Jesus needs a quick shout-out to his journeyman who just missed an exit and added 20 minutes to their already three-hour drive. They're excited yeah, about that. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah tonight to those that celebrate. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. On the half assed morning show. History in flight. You bet! Caitlin Clark! 3,000 career points! Another forever moment for this transformational superstar. Just the 15th player in Division I history with 3,000 career points. Nice. All right. Randy Shaver's here. Hello, Randy. Hello, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like that line, huh? I did. I yeah. And I like the delivery as yeah. well. So that Caitlin Clark, the Iowegian 
basketball player hit yes. 15,000 career points. No. no 30,000 career no. points. She's no. the 15th no. one to do it. Where there's a 15 and a 30 in there somewhere. 3,000. 3,000. 3,000. 15th one to do it. And yes. she played... 3,000 minutes in last night's game. Okay. <laughs> she scored 14,900 last night against Iowa State. Holy That's cow. a lot of points. So she got a lot of points. Let me ask you something. If she's a 15th <laughs> D1 player to accomplish that, are they are they, um, are they they taking into consideration guys and girls or just? Uh, that's a good question. I don't okay. have the answer to that. She's the one who last year's women's championship game, there was some kind of hubbub between her yes. and. Yep. Yeah, doing the, like, the little face uh Wipe kind John of thing. Cena. You can't see me. Mm-hmm. You yes. can't see Correct. I remember that now. Okay. Yes. Well, good for her. She's a hell of a player, and she's the reason why the Gopher women's basketball game against Iowa at the barn mm-hmm. on February 28th is already sold out. Dang. That's cool. F me running. Yep. Well, there you go. Good for Caitlin Clark. Randy Shaver, it's time that all of us, including myself, pay homage to me. <laughs> good morning, Randy. There'll be a there'll be a proper time and place for that. <laughs> like when, when we're reading your obituary, yeah, yeah thank you. Standing in front of a cask. Well, what's the not the obituary, the uh, eulogy? Um, all of us, including myself, it's time for us to go ahead and suck it up and admit how wrong we were about Rudy Gobert. Well, I, you know, I'll be the, the first to do it. I was wrong the, about Rudy Gobert. I got mad. I said some things. I've never heard you say I, one bad I, thing. I don't. I don't think you have to take a lot of what you said back from last year because, okay. arguably, he did not play very well. No, and, he didn't. And he was took it to heart over the off season, and uh, apparently um, rededicated himself to a lot of different things, and, and we're seeing the. The fruits of that right now, that and the fact that he's now been with this team for a full season and right. they're starting to figure things out together. You're <laughs> right, though. The man has played oh. lights out oh, man. on both ends of the floor. He was so good last night. He was, and they needed that because they were sluggish last night. Yeah. They did not play well early against the San Antonio team that had lost 14 in a row. And it took him until really the fourth quarter to kind of wake up a little bit. Edwards right. is still a little dinged up. He's, he's rusty. Not He's not a hundred percent. Yeah, um, and that's going to you can see that last time. night. Yep. It, was, it was easy to see that Anthony Edwards was rusty and a little, still a little dinged up. Yeah, right. But even after all of that, um, this was a game that probably a year ago, two years ago, they would have lost. Oh yeah, they, they would have lost this game. They would have lost last night game with uh, without Rudy Gobert. They would have lost the game. Yeah. Well, without sure, Rudy, I, they don't win I, last night. Well, I don't. I don't know about that because I think Nas Reed played really well last well, night. Well, yeah. And Nas so, Reed always plays really right. well. Yeah. But I'll say that just the mentality of this team, yeah. they likely would have lost the game. You're right. The mentality is different. It and is. They're playing different. And there's no doubt Mike Conley has made has, been, has become a big part of that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Mike Conley's a pimp. He has settled things down across the board with this team. And he is the floor leader, the general, and Mm -hmm. they all, I mean, they all kind of really know their place now, right? I mean, I think we're kind of seeing a team that that they've all figured out what is my role? What what am I, how do I fit in all this? And I think what we're seeing is the the result of that, which Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. success. What's the more out of nowhere story? The Wolves being 16-4 and four and looking like this real threat after looking so discombobulated at times right, last year. Right. What's the more out-of-nowhere story? The Wolves or the last week and a half of the Man Bear Pigs? What's taking you by? They're I both. Say, they're, they're such similar stories, really. I would say the Wolves only because it's over a, a much more extended period of time. Mm-hmm. To me, I mean... No, you're when right. You, when you make a coaching change in professional sports, more times than not, players <laughs> respond, and you see a surge a of... A burst. A burst. Right. And I think we've seen this with the Wild. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's more than that, but right. for a four-game stretch, it's been a burst. This other thing is a development of you're right. philosophy. It's a development of the players figuring things out, and it's, it's a combination of... Of all of those things, and I think it's a belief now. I think when you watch them play, 
It's a belief that they are going to win. They will find a way to win. And Okay, you're and right. And we have not seen that in the Timberwolves since the Kevin Garnett era. Going back to what you said a few minutes ago when you when you said we shouldn't have to apologize for criticizing Rudy Gobert last year because he was just that damn bad. It still drives me up a wall to see him handle the basketball sometimes. <laughs> I sure. climb the walls when I see how limited he is when it comes to handling the basketball. But, so you're right. But we if should, that's we, the worst thing about Rudy Gobert, I'll sure. take it. Sure. Come on. It is, it's, it's sometimes kind of fascinating to see that he cannot <laughs> handle a basketball in his hands. But where I'm going with this is, is, is this is where I'm going. You're right. We shouldn't have to apologize for criticizing him from last season because he was just that bad. But what I would like to suck up and admit where I was wrong is I thought during last season and in the offseason, I thought this is never going to work. It's never going to work. Yeah. Then at the very beginning of the season, preseason, I was reading some stories in the newspaper. I was watching some videos online where I thought maybe it might work. Well, we're seeing that it, it actually is working. For now, I don't want anyone texting in saying, well, are you ready to plan the championship parade? <laughs> You're, I'm just saying. It for now, it sure as hell is working, and they beat right. San Antonio. And your guy Wembenyami. How many threes did they get? The Timberwolves. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. I can't remember because High Rise Gamer Jesus reminds us we get free Arby's classic beef and cheddars today. If they hit twelve threes yeah. in oh, a game, they hit some insane mark, didn't they? Yeah, it was I, over that. It was. Yeah. It was definitely over that. I can't remember what exactly. Someone it was. find out the total three point baskets. Twelve for forty. Oh, was it was only twelve? Oh, I thought it was more than twelve. Oh, oh, I know what I was thinking. It was the number of attempts that was quite something. Okay. Forty is a pretty good amount of, of attempts, even by today's standards, well, right, Randy Shaver? You're going to do that because driving the lane against Wembenyama is likely not a right a smart decision. I mean, the kid is going to block virtually everything that comes down the lane. Yes, um, yes, so he, he's think, got some I, long I, arms. I think that's why you saw them do a lot more from the three-point line last night than maybe normal. Right. He, um, when Binyami actually had an incredible block on Nas Reed, he made Nas Reed as much as we all love Nas I mean, Reed. Even if he doesn't even block the shot, he will He will make you... Alter your route. Alter the... Yep. Right. So. Okay, it was 40 attempts. That was the number that grabbed me. That's got to be, in my opinion, my, my guess is that's got to be, I don't know, seven or eight more than average these days. Yeah. Uh, they will be playing. Go, go Bear, by the way. Just let me kind of wrap up Go Bear from yes. last night. He finished with 20 rebounds. He had nine in the fourth quarter alone last night. And. Yeah, he scored points and he was great from the field and all that. But I, I really think when you play a team like a San Antonio that has Webb and Yama, Zach Collins is a decent player, good sized guy. Um, you've got to win the battle of the boards. You've got to be better than they are in the boards. And they did that last night. Mm-hmm. They out rebounded San Antonio with Gobert and Towns, uh, getting 30 of their 55. But Gobert was an animal on the boards yeah, he in the was. second half, fourth quarter especially. They're at Memphis tomorrow night. Don't screw that one up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, these are teams that a year ago, two years ago, uh, and Memphis is a different team now. Yeah. They're not the same, but these are games that the Timberwolves would have struggled in. Now I think we all feel like, hey, you know what? They've got, they're going to, they're going to count, they're going to fall into a, a losing streak at some point. Oh, Every no, team they're does. not. <laughs> Every oh, team no. does. They'll have a stretch where things will be a struggle. We haven't seen it yet, and we may not see it for a while. Right. But every team falls into one of those at some point. Reason would tell you that, sure. Yes. Uh, um, but, but, but the Wolves should win the next one. How, how, just how weird was it when Rudy Gobert checked out of the game for for good last night. He got a standing ovation. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know if it was weird. I think it was well, respect. You, well, you I know think. what I mean. Last year, people were saying, get out of here, you son of a bitch, and yeah, don't come you know back. What? Come on, Nick. It's professional sports. All you got to do is 
one day you can get booed, and the next day, oh, if sure. you do something great, you're going to get cheered. It's, it still was a little odd to I see. Think, I think Wolves fans are watching what they thought they were going to get yeah. in the in the trade, and they didn't get it on a regular basis last year because of a multitude of factors. Mm-hmm. But they're getting it now, and they're seeing the effort, and they're seeing a team that is really starting to mature. Yeah, they're getting really. there. I mean, they're you don't see them barking as much about fouls. You don't see them. They're, they're just starting to figure some things out. And I hear you. Finch has done a great job of. I'm the one barking of, about fouls. I'll tell you that on my couch. Getting. I mean, look. I mean, Troy Brown comes off the bench now. All of a sudden, he's become a factor of this team. Mm. Not Nas is amazing. Um, he's terrific, and, and they're doing it with a bench really of nine guys right now. There's really nine, not or nine. Yeah, players. they're still short. They're still and, short, and it's working. So, I'm also fully prepared to go on and on about my Golden Gopher basketball club, yes. even though uh, there's only about three or four other people in town who gives them more than ten consecutive seconds of their attention. Uh, I loved what I saw in the second half last night from the Golden and Gopher basketball team. A year ago, that's a team that again would have likely folded and uh, not challenge Nebraska in the second half. And they did more than challenge him. They, they beat their butt. Oh, man, the they, they, they outscored him 52-26 to 26 in the second half. Yeah, Five I mean, players in double figures. And that's with Garcia hurt yeah. and not uh, much of a factor. So They overwhelmed the Cornhuskers with defense. They shot the ball well. They had great intensity. I think it might be one of their best games. Oh, yeah. Johnson. Oh, yeah. And, I, I mean, maybe and they not finished overall, the job. But they certainly second half. Yes, they finished the job, which they couldn't do against Missouri. They finished. They were up by six In a eight. Game they should have won. Yes, for they're sure. they're up six eight, and you're thinking, oh Christ, they're only a couple of bad possessions away from pissing this down their leg. But they finished the job, and this was a, a real blast last night. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, what by, else is by the by the way? Ah, watching that? that game made me feel super old because of Sam Hoiberg. <laughs> Sam Hoiberg, Fred's, Fred's kid. Fred's oh. kid. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, Fred's got kids that are college age. And he still looks 32 years old. I he know does. he does. I know he does. But I was just like, I was looking at that going, oh my God, Fr- Fred's got a kid that's playing for him. That's amazing. It's amazing. Golden I love Gophers Fred Hoiberg. got the win. We all love Fred. I wish he'd come back to town, you know, sometime. And, In some capacity. Right. Yeah. Maybe he just, will. Just a... A gem of a person. He's still young. He's 27 years old. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's got a college kid. Uh, Randy Shaver, here you go. An article from Yard Barker. Let's see if you can match up with who Yard Barker called the five most unwatchable teams in the NFL. Uh, Let me give you a hint. Okay. Two of them are playing tonight. <laughs> the okay. five most unwatchable teams in the NFL. Well, uh, can I guess? Yeah, that's what I'm looking asking? for. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, uh, obviously, New England, I, I don't know if I des- necessarily put Pittsburgh in there, but New England, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got New York of- Giants, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Two more. Okay, let me let me just uh, think about this. Carolina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only, um, only one more. There are a lot of laughs. Uh, the Jets. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two, according to Yard Barker, and, and uh, Randy, maybe you would have said. And yeah. I think you could almost put Tennessee in that group. I haven't Tennessee, seen them play. T- Tennessee's been absolutely miserable. I thought they had some big blown up quarterback now that uh, well, runs. Well, Will Levis has not really played lights out okay. like the kid from uh, Houston has done, certainly. The five most unwatchable teams in the NFL. You named them all. Two of them are playing tonight. You know how much I love that. <laughs> the Steelers and the damn, uh, how do you call it, Patriots. Patriots were number one. They went five to one, the most unwatchable teams. The Jets, the Panthers, the Stillers, the Giants, and the number one most unwatchable team in the NFL, New England Patriots. It's so bad in New England that Ezekiel Elliott is their star offensive player. Ezekiel, oh, the old running back from Dallas? Yeah. I didn't even know he was still playing in the league. Yes, he is is their star player. Folks are calling tonight's game the unwatchable bowl. (laughs) Yeah, but the Steelers have a winning record. They're actually in the playoff chase. Here's what they say about the Steelers, and and I knew someone would want to ask about it. They say uh, they're the only team with a winning record on this list, but they are winning ugly. They fired their offensive coordinator, a guy by the name of Matt Canada. They said it was just torture, uh, that dude, and the way he put together an offense. Uh, They did put up a bunch of yards against the Bengals. Yes. 
but they looked dreadful last week. Now their quarterback, Kenny Pickett, is is he hurt? No, he's not. He's Sorry. I, I, I'm thinking I of somebody he, I, else. I thought he was. Oh. I thought Trubisky was playing quarterback for them. Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Pickett is out yeah. for several weeks yeah. with an ankle Trubisky injury. Is their quarterback. Okay, and I thought it was interesting that Kenny Pickett was called in this article about the most unwatchable teams. They called Kenny Pickett the most unwatchable player. <laughs> well, that hurts. <laughs> I'll dig well, a guy's confidence yeah, during the holiday season. Nice. I, I don't know about that. I think <laughs> that I, I, sucks. I think I would choose the New England quarterbacks total. Okay. Uh, well, the Jets Kenny quarterbacks, Pickett. you know, right? Well, yeah, but that's been kind of amusing really, okay. to watch those guys. You didn't have anything nice to say about the Panthers quarterback a couple weeks no, ago. No, but he's a, he's a rookie, so you got to give him cut him a little bit of of a break. You know this Kenny Pickett's college buddies are texting him saying, Hey dude, I saw you I saw you mentioned in a in a yard barker article. You should look it up. And he looks it up. Oh great. I'm the most unwatchable player in the NFL. That's cruel. Ah, but they play tonight. And, here, and here's the most surprising part of that list. Arizona is not on that list. No. And Arizona coming into the season, everybody thought Arizona was the worst team in the NFL. And they've proven to be actually competitive in some ways. They're not a great team by far, but Kyler Murray coming back has made them at least a more competitive football team. All right, let me ask you guys this now, since we're talking about unwatchable people. You guys watch all the television and the movies that are available. Mm-hmm. All of you, you love that stuff. Who's the most unwatchable person to you personally on television it could be an athlete it could be an athlete because of course you guys watch sports too now and again you never watch my friggin' golden gopher basketball team and you never watch the wolves but you guys watch sports who's the most unwatchable person in your opinion you guys are going to probably hate me for this but i john cena oh i love john what? cena i hate his acting get out of this room i'm so sorry uh, go for a walk so ashley sorry. ashley you and i just became even closer yay <laughs> we did <laughs> I also can't stand to see John Cena in a friggin' television show or a movie. He's so funny. He sucks. He's, he's not like funny. He's like the sweetest guy in the world. I know he is, but he sucks and he's not funny. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd, I'd say Belinda. Oh, 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 You're the only one that would ever say something like I, that. Yeah, that's true. I, it's a complete. I you love what done. I love watching her. It's a joke. You are done. You're done. I always couldn't stand Paulie Shore. Oh, I like the weasel. Hey. He, had, he had some moments. It's yeah. understandable. I, I get it, Wapple. I get it. I, I, I hate do. him for Biodome. Oh, no. Yeah. You got to give a guy a break. That was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing good that came out of Biodome was the safety dance. The safety dance? I never saw it. You could dance if you want to. You well, no, I know the song, behind. but what do you mean? They, they play the song in the movie? Yeah, or? they're dancing in like a conga line going around the stupid biodome. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a movie you'd like. Yeah, it's oh, a stoner flick. <laughs> who, else, my, who else wants to play? Randy. Here's, here's mine. Go ahead. I cannot stand John Oliver on HBO. <laughs> I don't even know who that I, is. He's, he pretty, he's that, pretty high in his home does that, himself. Does that show on Sunday nights? Oh. I, as soon as it comes on, I turn it off. Do you know him, Josh? Oh, John Oliver, I'm familiar with him. Can yeah. you show yeah. me? He looks like one of those guys I, that thinks he's smarter than everyone. I mean, I'm sure it's very... I mean, I've watched it before. I'm sure you've seen it's, it. It's political satire. It's, you know, I get it. I just... Him personally, I, can't, oh. I just can't watch him. Josh is showing me a picture of him. I don't recognize him at all. Oh, you've I never have, seen him? I don't have HBO. I don't. Well, then you're lucky. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who he is, but that's funny, Randy. I appreciate that. Oh, I know who you hate, Nick. Who? Ken Jeong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't he's like everywhere. him. I don't like Sandler. Oh, he's not kidding. I don't like that friggin' guy, the guy who played the Kenny Powers or whatever. That Brian guy. McBride. Oh, Danny McBride. Danny McBride. I want to ch- choke that son of a bitch. I love him. Danny McBride. I can't stand that guy. For me, I would he say, has his moments. <laughs> yeah. For me, I would say anybody and everybody that's on those sports talking show head where they're just shouting over each other the entire time. Well, that's what sure. me and Randy do. And but no, but they're like just trying to come up with the hottest takes. That's what you Randy know. does. It's just, it, it gets maddening to me. Oh, Going Colin after Coward. Rudy Gobert last year, the way you were. <laughs> Colin Coward? Oh, barf. I hear people yes. that don't lie. I don't, Absolutely I don't know him. I don't, I don't see him, so.
dork. Well, that jo- <laughs> <laughs> Josh is too nice of a guy, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I don't know. there's nobody that really comes to mind that I... Yeah. I mean, like I said, I watch TV like late Friday and Saturday nights, and we just binge whatever, you know, whatever's yes. on. And that, and that, then you're making a choice, so you're not, you're not subject to things you don't want to watch. So. I will say, I guess the closest one I can think of is I watched Hard Knocks with the Jets, oh. and the first episode, I thought I was all wrong about Aaron Rodgers. I was completely wrong. I feel like a fool. I, I owe him, even though I've never said anything out loud, I owe him an apology for yeah. how I felt about him. And then maybe episode two, three, I remembered, okay, this is exactly why I didn't like this. This guy's an insufferable, <laughs> self-centered prick. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, also during uh, Quarterback on Netflix, I fast-forwarded through all the Mahomes stuff and mostly just watched our guy, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I'm with you on that, too. There you go. People Travis, are saying, Travis Kelsey probably fits that list for me. Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm so tired yeah. of NFL Sundays and every freaking commercial. Yeah. Is Travis Kelsey? It's gone too far. Yeah, I can't take it. He does far. come across his brother too. They come across as nice guys. I've heard some great things they, about they him. They do. But, no, I. But you're right. It's just totally too much. Agree. It's just too much. Overexposure. Uh, but Kevin Hart. No. Nah. No, oh, I think there's way too much of him. Small yeah, doses. There is, there mm-hmm. is but. Watch it. A lot of folks yeah. here, uh, <laughs> I'm watching text messages roll by. A lot of folks in our listening audience don't like Stephen A. Uh, Stephen a. Smith. Yep. I, I, I've, I've grown to like him a lot. Uh, yeah, I've changed my mind on him, too. Uh, I, just, I can't. Uh, Judge Judy. Uh, <laughs> She's so Judge mean. Judy. Why is she always so mean? I don't know her. I've heard the name. Jay Leno comes up a couple of times. I don't like Jay Leno. Gosh, she has been off the air forever. Yeah. He's also some game show that I occasionally see in the afternoons. Uh, yeah. you, also, gotta spe- you have to specifically go find oh, it. He's yeah. still on TV. Like, oh, there's yeah. some game show he has, some trivia shows. Well, I know he does like car shows. Yeah, I was going to say he has a bunch of car shows too. What kind of un American bastard texts in that he can't stand to see Rodney Dangerfield on television? Oh, God. Yeah. Really? He's been dead for like 15 years. What don't you like about Rodney Dangerfield? The guy doesn't say anything. He just sends in Rodney Dangerfield. Huh. That doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, I, like I you guys said, he hasn't been on. He's on. He hasn't been on television in. 25 right. years. It's a class. Plus, he and I got the same doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that again? You know my doctor, right, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Vinny Bombas. Justin Jefferson is back with the Vikings, they say. That's awesome. Yeah. And they say he'll be ready to play on Sunday against whoever the hell it is they're playing. Uh, Las Vegas. The Raiders. I saw I'll Kevin bet, Steve. I'll bet you uh, my last dollar that the stadium in Las Vegas will be full of Viking fans. Yeah, I, that's, I just, a, that's a trip that Viking fans likely circled on their calendar before the season started for a multiple reasons. But for the fact it's in Vegas in that supposedly great stadium yeah. against a team they should beat. Yeah. And it's December and it's cold here and it's warm there. Mm-hmm. I, I, you, you can't tell me. And there's certainly snowbirds and transplants and yeah yeah they're gonna the vikings will likely own that stadium on some a lot of minnesotans going out there to watch the game and maybe pay for some oral <laughs> kevin seifer from espn tweeted yesterday there's a site that <laughs> right, crunches <Waffle? laughs> sorry dana there, there's a site that crunches the numbers and pretty much like where tickets are bought and purchased from online and say as of right now it's close to 60 percent estimated vikings fans in the stadium oh, I'll, bet, I'll bet it'll be more than that by That's the time I'll watch a ball off. game and pay for some <laughs> head coach of the vikes kevin o'connor says that uh uh jeffy uh mm-hmm. jiffy uh josh josh dobbs Swampy swanson will remain the starter this week against he's the only logical choice Las Vegas. want to address the quarterback huh go ahead sorry I'm just, I'm just saying he's the only logical choice i thought you guys wanted to see the other guys oh i well, want dobbs in there oh I, I i just don't think the other guys are a logical choice at this point um he does give them their best uh, chance to win, but um, there's a caveat in that he did not play well at all against the Bears. I can't watch him again. <laughs> we'll see what happens this time around. Want to address the quarterback position? Uh, we will be starting Josh Dobbs in the football game on Sunday. Feel great about kind of our bye week process. Josh has continued comfort in our offense and, and how we play, but also uh, our offense and, and our staff's ability uh, to evolve and, and, and help Josh thrive is our plan. We're very confident in him, so looking forward to that. I hear you. 
that's kind of what you see, right? That's what every sports blog is writing writing about. Josh Dobbs has the he gives you the highest ceiling and then the lowest floor. You could go either way. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to no offense, but you're not going to play uh Sean Mannion, you're just not going to do that. Mannion. And Jaron Hall, the the rookie, maybe has a future here, but your playoffs are on the line. So you're going to give the ball to a guy that at least has proven himself to be able to win NFL games. It's a process, and so I think the communication has been great, starting with the coaching staff, asking like, hey, like, what are what are you comfortable with? What do you, what plays do you like? What concepts are you good at? And I'm excited to get to work. I know we'll, we'll put together a good plan, and uh, we'll give our chance to go out and, and put up some yards and points on Sunday. Pastronaut. You know, we were joking around a couple minutes ago about the uh, the characters we we least enjoy seeing on television. How did I say it the first time around? Unwatchable. Unwatchable. Characters, actors, whatever. Could be athletes uh, that you find to be just completely unwatchable. Here's a text message from a listener that says, Kevin Costner has sucked in everything he's done. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dang. No. no. It's a bit of a reach. No. Uh, he's, uh, I, I've, I've been... I've never been a big Costner fan. I've seen a couple things where he was really good, but I've seen a few. He's been good. For sure. What are you going to do? He's been really good. What was I going to say now otherwise? Oh, uh, I have a quote here from the MILF man, uh, Zach Wilson. We've, we've, I've fallen in love with this story. Yeah. The MILF man. He denies that he's reluctant to return to the starting job with the New York Jets as their quarterback. And here's a quote from him. I just wanted to give you the quote. I want to play for these guys, he told the media. I would do anything for these guys or their moms. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> now, that, that's not a quote. <laughs> but mostly their moms. <laughs> the Beave. You guys hear what happened to the Beave? Yeah. What happened yeah. to Jerry Mathers? No, 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 no. Not the... Stop it. Dallas head coach Mike McCarthy, the, the Beave. He had to have a uh, emergency surgery for an appendectomitis or whatever. What, what, he had what? appendicitis. Oh, okay. Appendicitis. Appendicitis. He thinks he's going to coach, though, on Sunday. He says he'll be on the field. Anyone here ever have Is to? Is it Sunday or Monday they play the Eagles? Uh, Maybe it's a Monday Sunday night. night. Sunday, Sunday night, night, yep. Okay, Sunday night. He had to undergo surgery. Thank you, Josh. For um, appendicitis. Yes. He had to have his appendix out. Anyone experienced that? A buddy of mine on our soccer team growing up, he had to go. He had bad stomach pain. They realized his appendicitis. They took him and he was prepping him. He had the gown on. They had him go to the bathroom before he was oh, gonna. Oh, and he was pregnant. He then he had a baby in the toilet. Yeah. My God. No, he he passed out from the pain and got a concussion from hitting his head on the toilet. Oh, how bad. Jeez. Yeah. A little insult to injury there, and we yeah. they, we never let him forget about it either. It it is really really dangerous appendicitis can be. My, my mom had it, and it her appendix bursted. Yeah. And if you don't go to, get to the hospital in like a certain amount of time, it's like right? certain death. Yeah, My cousin, certain my cousin death. had the same thing. Hers did burst. It was pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. it does something like it like yeah. eats up your insides. That'd be a sweet album title. Certain death. That's probably been done. It's gotta be done. Right? A Jacksonville Jaguars employee has been accused of stealing $22 million from the team. That's a lot. How how does how does, <laughs> a, how does a person get away with that without some NFL security people figuring it out? Don't know. It gets to be twenty two million. That's just insane. He was a financial guy, not directly connected to the the ball club. Just some kind of a numbers guy. Twenty two million. It's crazy. Twitter went sideways on this, you know, and they all made basically the same joke, you know about certain players who have stolen millions from their team in the oh, past. You yes. see where they went with that? And so they were going after uh, uh, Urban Meyer, Blake Bortles, Blaine Gabbert, oh, man. Footlong Foles. Well, I, he didn't steal money from... He won the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, no, from the Jaguar specifically, Randy. Oh, from the Jaguar. From his I'm time sorry. with the I Jaguar. Got I got you. Yeah. <laughs> he stole from us. Wait, he gave us a Super Bowl. <laughs> and they went after some other. They took our jacket. They <laughs> took <laughs> totally. <laughs> Dirk or Dirk. <laughs> they went after some other athletes not having to do with the Jaguars. They went after my guy, Mike Glennon. The Bears gave him $45 million. He played four that's games. That's the Bears' fault. Well, right. That's not Mike Glennon's fault. But that's not. That's no fun on Twitter to be reasonable and, and factual. 
You know, you, you, you go you, after you the player. You show up and the Bears say, geez, we're going to give you $45 million to play football for it. That what? sounds yeah, a little I steep am. to me, Bears. <laughs> I'll just take a 50 <laughs> Fifty dollar bill and a good meal at a fair price. The Los Angeles Rams are back in the playoff picture, but their field goal unit uh, sucks. So they've signed up that old fart Mason Crosby to yeah, try and oh, kick some field. Goal. Oh. Guy's like fifty. He is. What else is going on? Oh, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm a fan. Yep. Me too. He will co-host Nickelodeon's Super Bowl broadcast. This is the first ever alternate Super Bowl telecast. And SpongeBob and Patrick Starr will join Nate Burleson and uh, Noah Eagle in the broadcast booth. (laughs) That's awesome. Sideline reporters, Randy. Sandy Cheeks. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Larry the Lobster. Yes. Dora the Explorer. She has... Something to do oh, with she uh, will get she will get the inside scoop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> swiper no swiping. Oh, I'm, it's to get the Spanish speaking audience. That's okay. what they're doing. I'm not familiar. I mean, I've heard oh, the I name. Bet. Who is Boots? What character Boots? <laughs> Boots he was is on her Dora. buddy. Yeah, he, I'm little, sorry. He's a monkey, monkey, right? He's yeah, a, he was a monkey and he wears boots and he hangs out with Dora, the explorer. Yeah, yeah. they oh, go okay. on adventures together. They do. Got to watch out for swiper. No yeah. swiping. Swiper's an I'm evil. They go on an adventure with a monkey and a. Lobster and a talking backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you have one that of those adventure so bad. every morning, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Look around with, your studio. With the monkey? <laughs> well, the Muppet, yeah. We, I have an adventure every day with a studio. Muppet. <laughs> you don't even have to leave the comfort of your studio. <laughs> Maybe not even the comfort of my own home. Will you guys watch the uh, SpongeBob uh, Super Bowl coverage? Yeah. Not exclusively. I'll definitely tune in. Yeah. Th- those, that alternate. Nickelodeon broadcast is how I realized Nate Burleson was so funny. Mm-hmm. They do a good I really job. Really became a fan. Pigs are playing tonight in Vancouver, nine o'clock. Thanks yeah. a lot for the nine o'clock. They're going to play. Uh, see if they can keep this win streak going. Yep. A chicken nugget caused some chaos during a minor league hockey game yesterday morning. I've never heard of this before. This is an ECHL. What, what I mean by that is a morning hockey game. This was an ECHL game between the Toledo Walleye and the Kalamazoo Wings. Kalamazoo Wings, of course, used to be the uh, top farm club for the North Stars when I was growing up, the Kalamazoo Wings. So the Toledo Walleye and Kalamazoo Wings are playing an ECHL game. And in the morning, it was, they call it here in the article, a morning kids game. Yeah, I thought they were playing for like schools or something like that. Little kids. Yeah. Oh, like a field trip thing. So yeah. the, the whole rink oh. consisted of high school, junior high, and elementary school age students. God, I bet that was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so much fun in high Nobody school. Nobody paying attention yeah. to the game. I mean, the high school kids are probably sneaking hooch in and having some fun, but the the elementary school kids, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think that live sporting events should be 18 and over. (laughs) Should be 18 and over. Kids shouldn't be allowed at ball games. But anyway, so they're playing a game in front of a group of kids, and some kid, probably one of the high school pukes, he threw a chicken nugget out onto the ice. And one of the players sees it skipping across the ice, and he quickly wrist shots it back into the crowd. All right, here's a look at what we're thinking is the reason why Kirill Tutayev is in the box. Yeah, see, something comes flying in from the crowd here, and Tutayev sent it out of play. I was broadcasting while someone was plugging his nose. (laughs) (laughs) One of the kids from, uh, not kids, one of the players from one of these ECHL clubs, fires the chicken nugget back into the crowd, and the ref threw him out of the game. It's pretty disrespectful to the nugget. I, yeah, gave, I him a, gave him a 10-minute misconduct penalty for shooting this chicken nugget back up into the crowd. Kicked him out of the game. It didn't look to me like he was trying to be a jerk. He no, was just getting no, rid of it. Yeah. No, he was out of my way. doing the refs a favor. They're getting ready for a face-off. That's I can, how I took it. I can handle this friggin' chicken nugget. Woo! He fires it back into the crowd. Some kid probably caught it in his mouth. Oh, that would have been impressive. <laughs> That's what I call a hole in one. The whole crowd would have went insane. My stepson could do it. He's the best I've ever seen. He's never missed one. Oh, really? Yeah, really? Never one. You can throw whatever. He'll get it. Do you rough. Like, throw him deep in the end zone and he still makes a, <laughs> makes a grab? Yeah, you need a Hail Mary with <laughs> yeah. a nugget? He'll yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs>
I would guess maybe the referee's just not a morning person. In a pissed off mood from maybe, the get go. Maybe he was just tired of all the noise in the building. Oh, the kids. oh good call. It's <laughs> probably like, get this damn game over. Oh, yeah. All the mm-hmm. screaming. He yeah. was tired of it. Yeah, there's something you go to a Twins game and you think, oh, it's a midweek getaway day. The ballpark will be pretty empty. Then you get there and you remember there's 9,000 field trips there <laughs> of kids, you know, in line and screaming and yelling. Right. Uh, back to hockey. Anyone give a rat's ass that Patty Cakes is making his debut with the Detroit Red Wings tonight? It's interesting. Oh. What was that? Oh, I made a fart sound with Did my you? mouth. You're all done with Patty Cakes? Yeah, I, I've never really liked him. He could dangle back in the day. You got to admit mm-hmm. that, Wapple. Right. Oh, yeah. He was like the, the curry of hockey. Everyone wanted to see him warm up. He would do his little, you know, stick handling drills around the pucks. Yeah, he was cute like that. Friggin' Yankees are going to make a trade for Juan Soto. Already did make it. They trade. already made a trade? Yeah, it's done. Seven-player deal. Of course. Soto is only 25. I, I don't know. I guess I thought he was older than that. But, man, mm-hmm. he's like right in the prime of his career. And they just got uh, that right fielder from the Red Sox who can play. What the hell? They did. Verdugo. Verdugo. Yeah, so they wanted two left-handed outfielders, left-handed hitting outfielders, in the offseason. They got them both in the same week, and obviously Soto's a stud. Mm-hmm. Uh, they gave up a lot, I will say. They gave up five players, and a couple of those pitchers are pretty good. Michael King had a great year last year. Mikey King. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're seeing some teams make a lot of moves. We will not see the Twins <laughs> involved in anything like this. Uh, so they, they will be looking for scraps by the time the... Uh, <laughs> the end of the baseball winter meetings are done. Christ almighty, they're going to bring back Dick Mountain, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they could. He's 49 years old. Old Dick Mountain's going to be slinging curveballs from the bump in Target could. Field again. I'd I mean, be happy when, to see Dick Mountain. Bring back you, Jake Cave, too. They are uh, they are trying to decide whether uh, Ashley's boyfriend, uh, Varland, <laughs> will be either a starter or a reliever. They may need him to be in the rotation because yeah. they lost... A couple of guys already. So, you guys get a look at Brock Lesnar's daughter, dude. Yeah. It looks oh. like Brock with a wig. <laughs> that mm-hmm. is insane. The, Uncanny. You can tell who her dad is. That's for sure. I didn't know he had a grown child. <laughs> I didn't either. Brock Lesnar's daughter just set the shot put record at Colorado State. She threw one of those shot put thingies, eighteen point five meter meters. Whoa! There's a picture of her online, and by damn, does she look like her daddy? Boy, she does. So then is that, did Sable have a kid with him? I don't know. I wonder if that's Sable's kid. I don't know. Well, she's very blonde. You know, not that you couldn't just get that from Brock, but if you mix his blonde with Sable's blonde. Double blonde. You get a (laughs) blonde double. Boy, she looks like the old man. She's only a junior in college and she's a... Snapping records left and right. I wonder if we'll see her someday at the Olympics. She is not Sable's daughter. Oh! Nicole McLean is her mother. That's none of our business, Wapple. Not familiar. <laughs> she was on, like, the Outdoor Channel and stuff like that. Oh. Put you on the Outdoor Channel. I guess channel. that makes sense, because Lesnar's a big hunter. True that. You're a big hunter. Of, <laughs> of stupid things. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you can tell that's getting close to the end of the week. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm going after Wapple, but I did. That was sweet. And speaking of female athletes, there's a new bar coming to town. Oh, where are they putting this some bitch uh, over on Franklin Avenue, where the old Tracy's Saloon and Eatery used to be? That place had some great wings. They mentioned the wingy in here. A new bar is going to be popping up in March where the old Tracy Saloon and Eatery used to be, and they're calling it, this is a great name, they're calling it a bar of their own. And mm. it's going to be Minnesota's first sports bar dedicated exclusively to women's sports. That's awesome. Yeah, that's very cool. They had a big crowd uh, f- finding. What's that? Crowdfunding. Gimmick? They had a big crowdfunding campaign. They raised a bunch of money. Yeah, they raised a ton of money. They got a website out there or a, or a Twitter page or something where they say, we envision a bar of their own being an ex- 
an inclusive, family-friendly location for anyone who loves or wants to love women's sports, and we know there are many others who share this vision with us. Now, speaking of great female athletes of all time, tomorrow night I'll be hanging out with Lindsay Whalen. That's cool. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm excited. Me and Janelle and Ashley are going to the Stanchion Bar in Corcoran. They've got a big-time right holiday... Right fo- from me. Yeah, you're, why don't you swing by and just get effed up? <laughs> <laughs> or show up effed up. <laughs> oh, we'll just get... You'll fill you full of shots. Uh, I've never Scooby been snacks. in the place. You've never been inside the Stanchion? I have Scooby not. snacks. I haven't had that in a long time. They're so good. Well, here's the deal. In the you old drink days... drink those at the Mermaid back in the day. Oh! The mermaid. Randy Shaver, here's the thing, because, you know, that's yeah. my stomping grounds, too. Sure. Ten years ago, if you would have walked into the stanchion, they would have just kicked your ass. Oh, probably. <laughs> they yeah. would have kicked your ass. I think ass. that's probably the reason why I've never gone in there. I'm yeah. afraid. <laughs> but now, you know, it's, uh, they got it's all family the... family friendly? Oh, of course it's family friendly. They got all the fancy schmancy, you know, neighborhoods popping up over there. So sure they hey. do. Yes, there's a lot of that happening yeah, over in that area. Cougars and everything. Uh, so <laughs> Cougar hunting. So why is Lindsay going to be there? She was asked by the stanchion. Oh, so it's uh, is it a Toys for Tots drive? Or they're going to pile or? up some money. They pile up money at the event, and then they go out and buy toys for kids. So oh, yes, it's sort of nice. Um, they've been doing this for years. It's a guest bartending gimmick. Oh, sure. So they asked, obviously Lindsay Whalen, and I, yes. I, I'm only getting this information from their website. They they asked. Um, a bunch of people. The Devin Worley band's going to be there. Frank Vassalero's going to be there. Good. Uh, me and Stinkin' Ashley and Janelle and Lindsay. So it's a big thing. I'm, I, mean, I know we've talked to her on the phone before, but I've never met Lindsay in person. Oh, and, uh, I mean, she, how often do you get to uh, serve beers and jaw jack with an, a, a Hall of Famer? That's right. An all-timer. Right. Well, good for you. That'll be fun. Yeah. Anyone got a Lindsay Whalen jersey so I can really creep her out from the get-go? <laughs> I do not. I've seen them at the ball games. I've seen them at basketball games, folks showing up with their U of M or Lynx Lindsay Whalen jerseys. So there you go. Stop by that bar, Randy. Come on, bring the wife in. I'll have to do that. It's like I said, it's literally right down the road from where I, I think we start around seven thirty. Me and Smashley and uh, how do you say it, Janelle? You say it's Friday. Friday. Oh, what did I say? I didn't mean to say Friday. It's, it's Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. If I said, oh, Saturday the ninth. Sorry if I effed anybody up. It's Saturday. Saturday night. According to the website, they got you guys bartending from seven thirty to nine. Mm. Come on in, Randy. I'll mix you up. What were you guys just talking about? Scooby snacks. Scooby snacks. You ever had a? Randy Shaver, you ever had a red-headed slut? <laughs> he oh, set I me like up, I have a feeling. Um, no, I have not. Those were popular drinks when I used to hang out at Pobs in Andover. Yeah, those are oh, pretty good, sure. too. They'd order up a red-headed slut. They're deadly, though. Did they, sure they, did they, they sneak yeah. up on you? Yeah, they, they have yag in them. Oh. So. I might be doing my first keg stand Saturday night, Randy. I'm going to be partying with some frat boys. I'm going to oh. Mankato for a graduation. My uh, stepdaughter's boyfriend's graduating college. So we'll be there Saturday. He's in a frat, and I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what you I'm do. I'm in serious trouble. You know what oh, you do man. when you walk in. You walk up to the biggest, baddest-looking frat boy, and you punch him in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sends a message yeah. right away, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Come in and then run, you right? Mean business. No, no, oh, no. I don't run immediately after. Drive. <laughs> you drive oh, out of there. Smart. That's going to be a hell of a deal. Cubby at a frat house. <laughs> yeah, I've never, never been to a frat house, and so we're uh, we were lucky enough to be invited. Saturday, we'll be down there, and it's funny. You know, I've mentioned this before. Um, I'd love this. Is such a cool event that you're at. Honestly, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm missing it. Oh, the stanchion. Yeah, that's so cool. That's, they would have loved to have you. I would have loved to have been there. Um, I have been looking forward to this night, though, just because it's a bunch of frat boys I'm going to be hanging out with, and it just doesn't make You're sense. You're going to have some stories, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you so. what. First thing you do when you walk in, really find out where the bathroom is for where to vomit later. Okay. Yes. You know what I, I mean? So you have a quick trip to the... Uh, You'll have a good time. Do you think they're going to tidy up the place before you get there? I was thinking the same (laughs) thing, Waffle. I wonder what state that house is going to be in. You know, I don't know what kind of frat he's in. I'm not sure if it's one of the wilder ones or not. Yeah, I've seen both both ends of the frat house Mm -hmm. totally destroyed and picked up nice. Well, he seems real... 
like uh, straight laced, so he could be completely wild, and I, he hasn't shown that. Side. Are they the types to kill a longhorn steer and then put it in the head? <laughs> Josh is going to be heading that front. <laughs> Again, it's just like we talked about last time. A few people are wondering if my. Uh, Stepdaughter's boyfriend is 35 years old. Going right. to I was going to say, State. Josh, you may be one of the youngest guys there. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else, uh, oh, wrong hole, Jesus, said, you're going to Mankato. That's not a frat house. It's a nursing home. <laughs> you know what I love about this bit that we started a couple years ago, poking fun at the Mankato St- uh, State hockey team for having 31-year-old guys and then bragging about going to the uh, national championship game? Well, yeah, you got professional. These guys have kids. What I love about it is, oh, my damn, does it piss off Mankato State hockey fans. It does. Every time we joke around about this, I get text messages saying, yeah, well, what about the time the Gophers lost in the... Okay, just settle the hell down. (laughs) We didn't put 30-year-olds on your favorite hockey team. We didn't do that. They're going to, Josh is going to walk in. They're going to go, who is this young kid? <laughs> <laughs> How can he walk in his own power? That's amazing. No uh, game, nothing. Dude, didn't we have chemistry together last semester? <laughs> I recognize you, man. <laughs> now watch this. Randy won't drive down the road to see us at the stanchion. He'll show up at Mankato State. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You got alternatives. You know, you can come down and see us. He's got a, fun. A, a hat on that says Patagonia. And like all the young guys are wearing. He's he's doing the young guy outfit bit. And I'm hoping there some some of the brothers and sisters are going to be there too uh, to see either their uh, family members, you know, get ready to graduate Saturday. So Hell fun. of a deal. Hell of a deal. Randy, we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow. It'll be mayhem around here. Toys for tatas and everything. Okay. We'll have a dad fights ready for you and Brad. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. Half-assed morning show. 93X. Music has been taken out of this portion of the Half-Assed Morning Show podcast for licensing reasons. All right, here we are. We're back on the program. It's 8.33. Thanks for listening to the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Wow. Dangerous toys. Scared. 1989. Waking up is virtually impossible. What made you want to fire up Dangerous Toys? Just because you're a badass? (laughs) Well, our next topic, I thought it would... You got toys in the name. Ah, I'm a dumb bastard. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking toys. I was focusing on scared. Ah, um, yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. I'm a stupid you idiot. You're not a stupid Sh- idiot. Dumb. Stop that. <laughs> Maybe it was too much of a stretch. Maybe I'm the stupid idiot. You're not the stupid you idiot. You don't really need an excuse to play dangerous toys, though. Especially this song. Oh, we're there. See you tomorrow at Toys for Tatas, everybody. And thank you ahead of time for your donation. See you there. Make sure you bring an unwrapped toy or two for donating. We're going to open the doors at 6 a.m. Rick's Cabaret, downtown Minneapolis. You get your free cover and breakfast buffet with your unwrapped toy donation. Very good breakfast buffet. Oh, it's delicious. It is. It is awesome. I mean, you're not exaggerating. I love the faces people make when I tell them, like, no, I'm, I'm being serious. It's really good. Like, at a strip club? Yup. There's, there's still that misconception out there. I know I, 20 some years ago, when this first started, I thought, why? Well, I, I can't eat breakfast here. It's a strip club. But it was awesome. It's incredible. Yep. At 8 a.m., they start serving hooch. Give me another great day, another great Toys for Tatas event. I just found out that um, my one of my brothers got a table down there. So got, that should be exciting. What do you mean? He's already reserved a table for tomorrow's event? Yep. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I think you can reserve tables ahead of time, yeah. Because I had a few people that asked me if I wanted to go in with them on a table and all that. Well, what the hell? Why don't you tell us this? I'm going to be standing with my back to the bathroom, you know what I mean? With nowhere to nowhere to sit. You could have told us that we could have reserved the table. I'm 52 years old. I can't be standing up all day long. I didn't know you could do that either. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can invade my brother's table. Yeah, every last year, every time I looked around, Ashley, you're sitting at somebody else's table. You're just bouncing all around every single <laughs> yeah. table. Have fun. Everybody inviting you in. Nobody, invite, nobody invited me to sit down. Everybody <laughs> wants to see a girl get a lap dance from another girl. Of course. Yeah, that is a fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is very true. I, I mentioned this before. My uh, stepson, this will be the first year he's going. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't want to see him get a lap dance, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't even think I want to see him get a lap dance. Good. If I'm he okay does get it. one, don't tell me. I won't. I don't want to know. I'm gonna, oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to sit with him. We're we're going to get a double. <laughs> we'll get a double. Bonding. We were talking toys earlier because a, a good friend of mine, gal I've known since high school, uh, I want to thank her again, Lene. Every every year, Lene stops by the house and, and 
piles up bags of toys to be donated. Isn't that wonderful? She don't even go to the event. That is awesome. And but, she always does such a good job. She got these great toys, so thanks again to the Lene. I'm going to show Josh the one that's the hardest for me to part with. And I think would be the hardest for you too, Josh, if you had it in your sweaty little hands. Well, it'd be tough to beat that real Tonka truck. She, she got a real Tonka truck. She got some Mario Kart matchbox cars. Uh, what else? Uh, board games and this and that. But here's the one that's going to be hardest for me to hand over when we get to Rick's tomorrow. Look at this, some bitch. No way. Dude, grave gr- digger. Massive. It's a grave digger truck. That's sweet. And the, the graphics are just beautiful. You think you're looking at the real Monster Jam grave digger. Cool. Is that one of those deals where you pull it backwards and then it goes forwards? No. Can you tell? No, it just it just sets and looks, looks good on looks your desk. Cool, and you can roll it over things at the house. I have a uh, maximum destruction doll, a doll uh, truck just like this at my house. So there you go. Thank you again to Lene. Now, are you guys? I was. I, I'm rolling through the internet last night. Show prep, total misery. Hate myself, wanting to quit. <laughs> and I rolled through. A really funny series of pictures. Are you guys familiar with the company? At first, I thought it was fake, but my my feeling now is that it's legit. A company called Death by Toys. Yeah, I've actually purchased from them. Um, they they're um, you know he makes all these funny toys. Like, have you seen those boxes you can buy? They're fake gift boxes. No. That have wild things. Invent like it's inside. Here's a toaster. Where you only toast cats or something like that. Oh, it's just ridiculous. That's neat. So when somebody opens up the gift, okay. th- they see that. This was so funny. This was my first exposure to the people, the folks from Death by Toys. They make these hilarious, um, you know, somewhat, some people would call, you know, distasteful yeah, toys. Yeah, edgy humor. Edgy. This guy makes them by hand. He does? Like, yeah, he hand makes all these oh, things. Oh, they're great, Let too. me roll through some of these that I found. And at first, I thought, this has got to be fake. But then, Death by Toys. They have all all kinds of action figures and play sets. The first one I ran into was the Deadbeat Dad action figure. (laughs) The box is empty. Nice. (laughs) That'd be fun to give that to, like, you know, your brother or uncle that doesn't see their kids ever. It says right on the box, Dad not included. He'll be back any day. (laughs) The Deadbeat Dad action figure. It also says on the box, he said he was just going out for cigarettes. <laughs> that is... <laughs> That's a regular bit on the podcast, Smartless. Mm-hmm. Right? Sean Hayes, his dad, did essentially that. You know, one of the hosts, and the other guys make fun of him for it. <laughs> Look these up on the like internet. Good friends do. Yeah. Look these up on the internet if you are brand new to this like me. You'll ch- chuckle your ass off. Uh, I have here in front of me the Having a fence dispute with your neighbor playset. <laughs> just saying that out loud brings me great joy. And there's a little, just a little tiny white picket fence that comes with the playset. Um, property lines sold separately. Does that sound miserable? <laughs> Having a fence dispute with your neighbor? Oh, Absolutely. I bet that can get rough. Okay, how about the me wearing my giant 90s jeans action figure? <laughs> It's a character that looks straight out of the little uh, action figure, straight out of the 90s. It's got a stocking cap on. It's got a T-shirt with a long sleeve shirt on underneath. Oh, I remember that look. That was very 90s. Mm-hmm. I sure that did look. that. I loved that look. Me I too. went with that look up and down. I got compliments on that when I would wear a T-shirt with a long sleeve shirt. on, And I was thin enough then where I could get away with it. Mm, and yeah. then, of course, the action figure is wearing massive Jinko jeans. <laughs> and we've told our stories here before about our massive jeans. Josh loved a big effing fat pair of jeans back in the day. I only wore, I wore them once. Oh, but you looked... Uh, it felt so stupid. You looked, you looked like you were going to be playing lead guitar in corn. Yeah, it, did, it was very corn-ish. And then I also had the giant wallet chain. It was a one-time thing. How about this action figure for you? I mean, this would make Christmas shopping so much fun. If I, I wish I would have known about this before yesterday. This would have been so much fun to shop for these effing things and bring them to Toys for Tatas. How about the effing a-hole at a party with a guitar <laughs> oh, action figure? I like Classic. That one. 
the a-hole at a party with a guitar action figure. He's got a guitar. He's got a goatee. <laughs> Looks like he could sit down and play uh, something by, oh, I don't know, uh, Jim Croce. <laughs> I love how it says on the packaging, hours of not fun. Will not <laughs> shut the F up. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then at the bottom it says it contains one piece of crap with guitar and zero talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one made me think of you, Josh. The outside effing sucks playset. <laughs> the outdoors or outside effing sucks playset included in the set. Because Josh hates it outside. Yep. He's an avid what, Cubby? Endorsement. He's an avid the endorsement. The most avid of endorsement. It comes with stupid sticks. Basic ass leaves and stupid fresh air. <laughs> I like that the fresh air is just empty. Just and empty. it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> stupid. Uh, this one actually made me think of Dana. Oh, yeah? Because I think you've admitted to this before. Mm -hmm. This is the me lying awake thinking of some crap I said four years ago action figure. Absolutely. That's me <laughs> on a daily basis. Since there's an action figure for me, that would be it. I wish I had better glasses on. I can't read the funny lines up here. I like this one, the taking a dump without my phone action figure. And it's mm. a guy with his hands on his knees with just a terrified look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm already in the middle. Oh, I forgot oh, my phone. What do I look at? <laughs> I wish I could read the smart-ass comments on the me lying awake thinking of some crap I said four years ago action figure because there's smart-ass comments here, but I can't read them. But well, it the... says warning contains regret. Oh, that's, the... that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, that I is wish funny. You can see that, huh? Yes. Good for you. Yes, I can. The action figure. Um, is lying in bed with a blanket up to their chest, and they have a very worried look on their face with their eyes wide open. And it says, sleep sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's uh, the me trying to fix something but injuring myself in the process while also making the problem worse action figure. <laughs> God, we've all been there. It's uh, a character uh, standing there with one missing arm and a lot of blood. <laughs> it's all blood. The me trying to fix something but injuring myself in the process while also making the problem worse. Action figure, just like the real thing. Hours of fun. Oh, I love the little catchphrase here also. Relax. I don't need to go to the hospital. <laughs> the me giving up and walking into the ocean with all of my clothes on action figure. <laughs> and I love that. In the box, he's facing the wrong way. Yes. Oh. He's facing towards the ocean in the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't see the face like you used to. That is just brilliant. I love that. Me giving up and walking to the ocean with all of my clothes on. Uh, the final one I had here, amongst these great series of toys you can get from some folks called Death by Toys. Oh, this is a play set that everybody should own. The all the skid marks in my dad's underwear playset. Oh, <laughs> <God>, gross. <laughs> Just like the real set. thing. And there's various skid marks that you can put in the back of your dad's underwear if you buy this playset. Uh, there's the good old fashioned racing stripes. Some people call them bacon stripes. Oh, yeah, or, my or, dad calls them that. Or, or bacon strips. They call them racing stripes. There's a, a mark in the back of the drawers called Old Spotsworth. <laughs> but my favorite is the firecracker design. The firecracker. Oh, yeah. It's like a splatter. Yeah. <laughs> like old spray gun in Contra. Mm -hmm. Good for these people. I was laughing my balls off at the house. I, the one I bought was the... Uh, my first vasectomy kit. Oh! I bought that for a buddy of mine that had a vasectomy. I saw that one. What does it come with again? It comes with a little tiny pair of, like, child scissors and two Band-Aids. Oh, God, that's funny. <laughs> uh, fun for all ages, it says, and 100% effective, probably. I dig it, man. What a great idea. Just to come up with these kind of, you know, half-offensive toys. <laughs> you know, people love to gag, gift, back and forth. What do they call that gimmick? The, the white elephant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That kind of a thing. Good for uh, Death by Toys. I think that's wonderful stuff. We're about ready to wrap things up here on the program in a handful of minutes. You know, we're at the point where we're seeing end-of-year lists up and down. Best this or that for the year 20 plus 23. Worst this or that for the year. I'd like to see that, actually. Worst movies, maybe. Worst. Wikipedia just put out a rundown of their top 25 searches 
in 2023. Wikipedia, very helpful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Use it often. Me too. I never donated. I feel like an a-hole. Donated? Dude, they always ask you for donations to kind of keep, oh. the, keep the train moving, and oh. I scroll right past it No, every time. see, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> is it true that, like, I've always been told this, and I've, I guess I've never asked, is it true that people can just, like, go on there and change anything yeah. they yeah, want? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay. I was going to bring that up, Ashley. Wikipedia, very helpful. I usually look up stuff like, what was the name of that guitar player, or what year did that album come out? That's my Wikipedia angle. But right, you can edit it yourself, the last I heard. Maybe that's been changed, but I know that you could edit it yourself. You can change history if you want to. (laughs) The reason why I know this is a pal of mine has edited Wikipedia several times in order to put himself on the list of past members of the 80s rock band Faster Pussycat. (laughs) I don't know why he continues to do this, but he does. We did a we had like a running joke for a while on the show when Tyus Jones was in the news. Of course, he went to Apple Valley High School, went to Duke. He's now in the NBA. Now I went to Eastview. Now I'd always claim that he went to Eastview too. He didn't go to Apple Valley. He went to Eastview. So I'd go on the Wikipedia page and I would change his high school to Eastview High School. <laughs> <laughs> it would always quickly get changed back. That's a strong bit. It is crazy how quick they change that stuff back. Uh huh. Who's keeping an eye on that? I don't Good know. Question. It's a hell of a gig. He's keeping an eye on everything on Wikipedia to make sure it's factual. All right. So Wikipedia slapped together their rundown of the top 25 searches for the year 2023. I actually only have 23 in front of me. I don't know what happened to numbers 24 and 25, but I only have 23 in front of me. I think we can live with that, right? We'll manage. That's fine. I've got the other two. Well, what are the other two? What's 25? 25, well... 25 was Andrew Tate. Should I know that name? Um, wasn't he, isn't he kind of like a, like a rich British dude, uh, former kickboxer? There was some controversy. Hell, I'll take your word for it. There's a lot of controversy around him, and so I imagine that's why. Yeah, I'm going to go into ahead. That too much, but yeah, yeah that's, that's, who, smart. <laughs> that's who he is. Never heard of the guy. Uh, what about 24? The Russian invasion of Ukraine. Oh, that's no fun. 23? Guardians in the Galaxy, Volume 3, the movie. <laughs> yeah, that one came out this year. It was one of the big hits. Did oh, you guys? I, I didn't watch it. Yeah, me either. So I didn't first even know it came out. <laughs> Did you come just uncorked at the theater? You loved every minute of it? Oh, it sounds like it. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> I think none I of us have seen it. Oh, you not, none of you yeah. saw <laughs> Number 22, Lisa Marie Presley. Did she die? No, but they made a movie about her recently, I believe. Yep. Yep. Wait a minute. So she's not dead? Lisa Marie Presley? No. Oh, uh, it was her mother that died. Yeah. Um, Priscilla, right? Yeah, the movie was about Priscilla, oh, I believe. Okay, and Lisa yeah. Marie... Oh, wait, no, she... Did she? She, she did die, yeah. yeah. Bowel obstruction. Yes, that's right. Lisa Marie did die. Oh, my oh, God. Too bad. I thought I was well, right I could, about that. I guess that. I could Wikipedia that. She, <laughs> yeah. Are you looking it up? Yeah, th- but this is from BBC, so it's even more credible. I thought she it had is? passed. Yeah, Lisa Marie died of a bowel obstruction several oh, years God. ago. Yeah, several years ago. Oh, really? No, it was, it was oh, this July. No. Uh, Boy, we're really spot on here, yeah. aren't we? Forget it. it. Wikipedia. It. it was caused by a weight loss surgery she had several years ago. Oh, oh. okay. Jesus, criminy. Let, let's not bring her up again. We, we <laughs> did not fare well with the topic of number 20 on the most uh, the list of the most searched things on Wikipedia this this year. Another movie, Avatar, The Way of Water. I loved that movie. I didn't see it yet. I actually went and saw it in theaters. I I love seeing, like, Avatar especially, like those big, uh, when they use all that CGI and stuff, I love going to see those in the actual movie theater. Number 19, uh, the guy that invented the internet, right? Elon Musk? No, 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 no. (laughs) He did not invent the internet. All right. Number 18 is simply the United States. Mm. Very patriotic, I'm sure. The motivation behind that was... Patriotism. 17, oh no, Matthew Perry. Mm, sure. Uh-huh. 16 through 14 are dumb. They all have to do with soccer. <laughs> <laughs> we just skip over those. 16 <laughs> is the Premier League. 15 is Lionel Messi. 14 is Cristiano Ronaldo. There you go. 13, Barbie the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was huge this year. You just oh, loved it. You loved it? All he has loved it? Yeah, I enjoyed loved it. it. Have not seen it. Oh, I think so it comes good. to streaming for free pretty quick here. I believe you're right Maybe there. Maybe I'll watch that. Number 12, oh, God. And next week. 
What are you going to do next week? Maybe I'll watch it next week. Comes to Max next Barbie week. the movie? Marco Robbie. Oof. The most rundown searches. How do I say this? Uh, the top searches of 2023 on Wikipedia number 12, Taylor Swift. Surprised that's on higher. Yeah, me too. Or maybe just everybody knows all they need to know about her at this point. You don't really need to seek out information about Taylor Swift. That's <laughs> might a, be a good lot point. Of, might be football fans looking her up. Sure. Why do they keep showing this lady? Number 11 is a HBO program called The Last of Us. I know I've heard it said out loud, but... Uh, Excellent. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Coming yeah. out with the remastered version. Boy, what happened to my list here, Josh? Mine, I, I should have noticed this, but I didn't. Uh, I'm skipping here from 11 to 7. Is the same thing on your list? Uh, yeah, let me go back to the uh, full list. I wonder why that happened. I think I would have noticed that, but I'm busy paying attention to the life and times of Lisa Marie Presley. <laughs> well, Obviously. I don't even want to say number 10 because I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh. P-A-T-H-A-A-N. Pathan. It's a, it's a movie out of India. Mm. Mm. All right, that's 10. Nine? Na- uh, nine is... The Indian Premier League. Okay. Uh, what number are we up to now? Eight? Eight is Jawan. Jawan. That is also an Indian movie. Number seven, uh, the guy who invented the internet, J. Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you understand where the internet came from. <laughs> number five is Oppenheimer the movie, where they discuss his invention of the internet. Well, they skipped six for some reason. The Cricket oh, they, World they, Cup. Jesus criminy. Number one... The rest is all cricket-related stuff until you get to number two is just simply deaths in 2023, which we should look up. Yeah, we should yeah. study that. Everybody come back tomorrow with uh, we should look up knowledge. Number one, I've heard it said out loud, and I don't know what it is, Chat GPT. That's the most searched anything on Wikipedia. Can someone tell me what Chat GPT is? Is that the AI stuff? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd like to learn more about it, too. I, it's funny, I get asked about it, like, hey, how much of uh, radio is, is Chat GPT? How much of it, you know, where you just write in, I'd like you to write me a paragraph on this subject, put this in there, don't put this in there, Oh, and I then know. it spits it out. Okay, now I know what it is. It's all that kind of phony robot writing yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, yeah I want to try okay, it. Okay. I've always wanted to try it to uh, see what it would come with, come up with for a commercial. Oh, wait, Dana, you did it once. I did it once. I put in something like write, uh, write a movie, or write a summary of a movie where the half ass morning show saves the world, or something like that. Oh, fun. And it kind of, it was kind of hit or miss. You know, it wasn't all that interesting, but I was just trying to play around with it, seeing if I could get like some type of funny, you know, thing we could read on the air. But uh, it, was, it was always just, and then one time I wrote, uh, write a story about the half ass morning show sex filled booze cruise. And it said like, this is too inappropriate for us to write. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We used to have those for real. Yeah, I know you did. We used to have those for real. Hot librarian. She just said your local librarians can help you learn about chat. GPT. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I would All like right. to learn more about it. Well, it's you'd exciting. be the guy that could figure it out, I yeah, bet, maybe. amongst I, I the think, five, six of us. Yep. Yeah, you guys could figure it out. You'd be the guy. I mean, guy. we're a little con- confused on what's going on with the Presleys. <laughs> Outside of that, I think you guys could figure it out, too. <laughs> we got to go. Happy 15th birthday to Alexander. Uh, Alexander, I'm sorry, from it's not 12 inches, but smells like a foot, Jesus. Cock Jesus wanted to wish his beautiful wife a happy 48th birthday. Machinist Viking Jesus texts the Luther Bloomington Kia tax line with a birthday shout out to his brother in law Isaac turning 21. I'd like to say happy birthday to my sister in law Shannon. And speaking of the Luther Bloomington Kia tax line, text ARENA mm. to 651 989 9393 for a shot to win tickets to see the Wild in Calgary next Thursday, furnished by the Minnesota Wild.